to really kind of highlight it is Louis versus Wham. Louis mm -hmm. versus Wham, that if I remember correctly in the group stage, um, they were on opposite sides, right? So they wouldn't have contested at all. You did, however, have Poppy Paul and Louis in the same group. And although they are not the same person, they do have a, a similar approach to their metas, right? Courtesy of the fact that they would have been scrimming together. Same reason why we say if you figured out how to deal with Vortex, you probably have a good idea of how to deal with Lucifer. Yeah, I mean... Not really sure. I feel like still at the same time, both of these players have their own distinct styles as well. Um, you know, Wham practicing a lot with Puppy back in the day, and I think still today they do practice quite a lot. So I think both of them have some of their own some of their own ideas. Um, and yeah, honestly, the way that Louis's been playing feels really, really, really clean. I think that's how I would describe the games that I've seen of him re recently. It's just like there's this. I don't know how to describe it, but like, especially when you see the Jean d'Arc games, I think you mentioned this earlier, right? Like when you see how he's playing with like these very intelligent and like well-crafted strategies that just work. And it's like all the ideas feel so obvious and clear cut and he's just executing them very well. That to me is the markings of a top, 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 top tier player, right? And I think, I think if he's able to kind of like get through this and like show that again and again and again, I think we're looking at potentially even a top three player. Um, in Louis right now, the way that he was playing last week and yesterday just showcased that to me a lot. Um, just the quality of that, like the, every decision point, like when he attacked, when he retreated, how he attacked, how he retreated, like how we transitioned into new units. All these things just kind of merge together into that that feel that honestly you don't really get outside of Beastie and Marine Lord usually. Um, but seeing that in Louis it gives me a lot of hope <laughs> that maybe we have another top three contender here, um, which could be really exciting. And Wham, Wham's been playing his, his ass off, honestly, recently. I think I'm really excited to see how he handles this. Um, I think Louis could be very challenging for him, but I think he certainly has what it takes. We saw that in the group stage. He just dominated. So I, I'm really excited to see how this match goes. I feel like it's going to be fireworks uh, starting off with Rocky Canyon in the draft. Interesting. Yeah. I, and this is the interesting thing, actually, is I think, like, to your whole point of Wham and Louie and the, how they've been playing, first 20 minutes is going to be make or break. I think that is where Wham has been looking most threatening in this tournament. He has had a very clean group stage off of his clean execution of his build audits. It's been almost impossible to get him off of his clean timings, in fact, for practically all the people in the running. On the other side of it, Louie, he has a little bit more of a shaky ground occasionally. He has some very creative and innovative drafts that usually help him in that early phase. Where Louis thrives, though, is in the late game. This guy is a beast. Even Beastie himself has mentioned that, right? Like, you know, if there's a player that he doesn't want it to run into 50 minutes into a game, this is the guy. And I've watched some scrim together. I've seen exactly why he feels that way. With picks like Jean d'Arc, which I think work a lot better in the late game than French, he shows it every day of the week. But we might even get, be getting to see that here. Because opening-wise, bans applied are going to be the recent ultimate. It's just a reminder, the way this UI works is if you see a Civ ban next to a player's side, it means they cannot pick it. Their opponent has applied it to them. Opening-wise, Louis is going to go for a very strong one here. Um, Iobids has, has kind of just been a really strong go-to at the moment. I think some players have looked non unstoppable, but wham, yoinks away. What I would argue is Louis' second best Civ. Yeah, getting John. I think that's going to be really clutch here. Um, yeah, the Ayubid pick as well, it feels like... It sort of solved a lot of these like castle age timing sieves by just dominating right away, right? I think the strat has been military wing into just like two production buildings and just going all out aggro with that. And it seems like that timing is really scary. And then they can very quickly age up after that if they need to flex out of it. So it seems like a very like safe pick against some of these sieves that are maybe a bit slower. Um, probably don't want that against Jean, but. We'll see what else Wham picks, and that might be a solid pick for Louis later. It's yeah. It's, so the the way it works, you have a very important choice to make straight out of the gate, right? Eco wing with the free villagers, or you go for the military wing. It's pretty much that every single game, unless you're playing a water map, in which case advance wing is kind of a no brainer. And the reason is that right now. White Eco Wing is just as good as the Desert Raider. The Desert Raider allows you to block a greedy play and force a reaction. Now, we, as you said, have some builds where you prolong feudal, you engage, but a lot of the builds actually using Military Wing are just meant to involve the other player, right? Like, imagine you're up against China and they want to build a good loose 2C. They're not getting that second TC away from base, right? Or you're up against the HRE and they want to go Fast Castle. Too bad, bud. You're going to have to add in an outpost because I'm about to hit you with a Desert Raider. And that's all for free and instantaneous. The alternative is if you realize your opponent's actually going to try to aggro you, but the Desert Raider doesn't have a good matchup, Growth Wing is a no-brainer every day of the week. 
uh, because the point in the game where you get it, it's a 15% increase in your economy. It's insanely powerful when you think about it that way, right? Like it's stronger than a Mansa quarry when you think about it that way. And you know, speaking of Mansa quarries, we are seeing Marlins, funnily enough, as a following phase pick priority for Louis. This surprises me considering that so far Marlins actually haven't been looking as crazy OP as most people would believe, right? Like going into this, this playoffs, I think when you collate all the results so far in this tournament, they are at like a 42, 43% win rate. But a lot of those have been against Delhi. Um, and when he, he banned Delhi beforehand. And then he picked Malians. I think that's where Malians were really struggling. We're on like Arabia, for example. We've seen both of the civs picked, and that's where Delhi just dominates. It seems like in, I think it was like two games yesterday it happened, that matchup. And in both games, it wasn't on Arabia both times. So I think it was Arabia in the second set and Coastal Cliffs in the first potential. I, if my memory serves me right, that was the matchup for Ottoman Malian, or sorry, Delhi Malian. And I think. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, but yeah, Mal banning banning Delhi, I think, and then picking Malians, I think, was really smart there from Louis. I think getting rid of potentially one of the harder counters, just because of the timing. It's just the timing of it. Like, Delhi just has way too much stuff too early yeah. for Malians, and then Malians' timing just gets delayed, and then they get, like, that second pit mine just pressured and then knocked out, and then they're just sitting there, and then suddenly Delhi's, like, Castle Age with, like, 15 Gazi Raiders, and they're getting relics, and it's just like, what do you do? Um, and... Uh... That's why we saw the Delhi ban then applied the other way, right? Where like, okay, yeah, exactly. I see what you're up to. Wham says, I'm not letting you have that for free. Um, it has an interesting knock-on effect. Both having Delhi banned out, you'd think Japan wouldn't be that high of a priority. I really like this from Wham. I actually think the Japanese uh, Delhi matchup can go either way. It requires a very specific style, though, that I've only seen Delhi-wise, Dumu A would execute. What you get instead by having the Japanese, though, although you don't counter a Delhi pick, you do counter a lot of what Louis has gone in for here. I really do like the Japanese up against the Ibids. I think that is a skill-based matchup where you can actually beat them with Onomusha comp with Kaburiya as a priority. And then also the rest of this draft for Louis is oh. a little bit rough there. Like French and Order of the Dragon, not great against Japan. It's kind of interesting actually that we're seeing Order of the Dragon drafted here. Louis is one of only two players to have a win with that Civ in this entire tournament. Yeah, so I think it's probably best for him that he has it. I mean, better for him than Wham would have it, right? He'd probably not feel very comfortable with that if he hasn't been playing it. Um, we've seen the Order of the Dragon on, what is it, Mongolian Heights, right? There's that, the barracks play. We saw that twice, yeah. I think, so far. Yeah, we I saw think, it in the, times. I think we saw it in a B Beastie series, right? Where it completely flopped because he'd done it against the Mongols, which is like one of the civs that you can struggle to do that against. And yesterday, um, Lucifer on Vortex, same thing. It was yeah. against Mongols, and the Mongols just dominated. So, when having Mongols for Mongolian Heights, which is very fitting, by the way, <laughs> I think that's funny uh, thematically. Oh. But yeah, we don't um, have Mongolian Heights actually. We, have we don't have it in though. this draft, right? No, we have Golden Heights. Okay, okay. The interesting part to me is that Cliffside is not hit in this, despite the fact that Louis' later part of the draft makes a lot of sense for Cliffside. Where's he like, gonna I take it? Um, it, it's Coastal probably Golden Heights. I think like Golden Heights could make a lot of sense, or it could be that comfy pick. Um, you mentioned Coastal Cliffs, right? Because we saw that Numidon Louis game where he got the win. That on Coastal way, Cliffs, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that I'm gonna be totally real with you. What happened in that game will not happen here. Like if if that plays out the same way, Louis looked really cool winning that game. We were talking before we came on screen because we saw it in the replays. Numidon's approach to that game, he had so many openings that he just kind of shied away from. Right? He told. Right. Wham doesn't have that same kind of <laughs> yeah. approach, right? Doesn't he doesn't hesitate. Problem. No, yeah. so it's going to be interesting. Opening game, okay, dude, this is a great way for Louis to start. Yeah. Ibids versus Mongols. I'm a little bit surprised Wham came out swinging with this. I thought he might try to save it for some like Golden Heights, but admittedly he's got HRE there. Then again, like what you're doing with Frisian. This matchup, Winston, heavily favors the Ibids. It's insanely powerful. Your only play is typically to go in for a very, very aggressive outpost rush that starves the gold out. If you miss that timing though, very difficult. And here's the thing that makes it difficult. If it's not a fourth spawning gold, it's gonna be a desert raider coming up from Louis. And the timing on that desert raider releasing is often quicker than your villager can build the outpost. And it completely shuts the play out. From there, it turns into a fast castle build where what are you gonna to build to deal with these lancers? Keshix, not a great choice, right? And the biggest advantage you have as the Mongols on Rocky Canyon is trading. You can't trade if the map is being flooded with camel lances. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I'm I'm curious to see this play out. I 
it makes a lot of sense all the things you said but it still comes down to the execution right like there's kind of an if there like if you get the tower up on the gold right if yeah. you have if you have a good map here um for mongols where you know maybe louis gold is forward it, it could be a lot easier and then suddenly it's just up right um and then the whole game state like all those statements are just delayed for you bids so i think it is definitely going to come down to maybe some of that early aggression if that's what we see from wham i think you kind of have to expect it that's what mongols have been doing in the meta very consistently uh there hasn't really been a lot of deviation from that so i'd be curious to see if there's anything up wham's sleeve here or if it's going to be kind of as you predicted here yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because, like, looking outside that element of the draft, I still feel like Wham got a bare chunk of it, right? Like, the issue I do see with Louis draft is that whenever I see the Marlins coming out, I know it's going to be a full-off English pick. Like, you're basically picking Marlins to protect the English pick, but, like, I have yet to be convinced, right? English are by far the worst performing Civ with about a, I think it's a 28% win rate, and they've had 25 games in the tournament so far. They're looking abysmal, and, like, the best map for them, which is Cliffside, isn't even in rotation here uh, from the map pool selection, so... Curious to see what Louis really has in mind with that pick in particular, but agreed. Like this, this opening Golden has already Heights, thrown. Right? It has to be right, but like it's like if it's it's for like maybe a backup pick on Golden Heights if you feel like you're going to get like hard countered with another pick. Maybe he doesn't yeah. really have many great Golden Heights civs. Like you're saying, Order the Dragon, maybe right? But like you Order don't want to pick Malians there. You don't want to go Biz there. You don't want to go French there. Um. And you don't want to use Malians there, right? So it's we like, I feel like Malians, English right? for Golden Heights, right? Like, like we used to see the Malians pick with the transport ship play, but then people realized like it's really cheesy and you end up just sacrificing a lot of villagers to do that play. Yeah. But maybe uh, he's getting creative with that kind of element. Maybe he's trying to make a return to it. Um, I, like I do that love... Just <laughs> it's it's going to lose. Like, yeah, it's like, I don't like it, but I'm wondering if he's got, he's got some sort of permutation we haven't seen. I was just about to say, though, I love the fact, like, you're not just seeing the Delhi priority, you're seeing the Chinese priority on each side. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Wham and Poppy Paul have been the two most impressive people in the Chinese I've seen in this tournament so far, closely followed by Louis. Louis, even able to overcome some what I consider hard hurdles, such as coastal cliffs with a Byzantine... Um, Chinese matchup, which I will always favor Byzantines. Louis, I think the only player who was able to get the turnaround win there. So, like, you know, it it's interesting because China would have been great for Golden Heights. Uh, let's say Mongols got saved there as well. That matchup used to favor Mongols. It doesn't quite work that way anymore. China, now with the supervision spam, can actually beat Mongols in a prolonged um, spam and spam. Yeah, with the adaptation to the build. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure. I think we've seen that for sure. Um... But Mongols already being used here. We'll see. I heard a sound. We're getting close. We're, we're, we're prepping. getting close. We're a minute out. It's um. I know. It's interesting to think because like I'm looking at the rest of this draft. Jean versus France could end up happening. Like I, I most people want to say that's Jean favored. It's there are ways French can participate. It's just they're predictable, right? Like that's the reality of those two civs. The way they clash is like if you're playing French, you're not out aggroing a Jean, are you? You're just trying to play greedy instead. So I imagine he's going to try to to pivot to dodge that. Um. Yep. I'm thinking like things that could deal with Jean quite well here. Order the Dragon is a double-edged sword. I don't like it as a pick because anytime you make a mistake, it's doubly punished, right? So we might be looking at Byzantines. That would be like Louis' best opportunity. If he can like suss out where Jean's coming out and get Byzantines, because most of his other civs struggle. I think Marlins has kind of been a bit wonky recently. And I can guarantee you, despite what happened historically, mm. the English Jean experience actually is one where she won. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I biz against John. I I don't like biz <laughs> against John. I don't. I don't think it works very well. Okay, I feel okay. like pick something else. Like they're all bad I, options. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't love the drafts against John. Right. I feel like that's no. that's really interesting when you have Ottoman and Roos banned right away. I feel like John becomes. A top tier pick, right? Yep. So I, I don't know how much I like Biz there, but I mean, I guess if you have to, right? You're right. Like, pick something else, right? Louis has no choice, but we'll see that when we get there. As instead, we are off with Wham and Louis. Mongols, a Ubid. Rocky Canyon. That's right. First game in a possible seven game series here. Whoever wins here will go through the semifinals to face off against Marine Lord, who I imagine is waiting with anticipation, dissecting every bit of this. Ibid's Mongols and Rocky Canyon, though. Both sides have some perks. We mentioned already the Ibid interaction going fast castle against Mongol trade is nice. 
And this is a map where Mongols typically want to trade. Now, there has been an adaptation I saw towards the end of the group stage. I think most notably Zertan done this, where instead of going for the trade that is expected from the Mongols, you actually go for a Deerstone play, and it gives you a little bit more of an aggressive ramping and a more optimized all-in timing. But step one to do that is good gold spawns. And I've got to say, I think Louis uh, got good gold spawns for him. He has one either side of his base. Yes, the second one's a bit further away, but even the primary is kind of masked around the backside here. So it might be difficult for Wham to get the outpost up aggressively enough. Yeah, because you're going to have to walk like between that force and the TC to get there quickly. And otherwise, you're going to have to walk all the way around. And that feels like it's just too far away from the other gold. And I, like the way that we, the way that we've seen players adapt to playing against Mongols, it, it's been in, like people have been doing this since the game came out. Basically, you just go to gold really, really early. Right. And you just try and get your gold before they can even get there. Right. Um, And with that in mind, I don't know if Wham's going to even get a lot done with the start like you're saying like if he goes millwing if he goes villagers i think obviously there's potentially a lot of opportunity still but i think if he goes i don't think for the eco though. wing like yeah. someone's dropped a brick on his head it's yeah like no one does that right it's like you just go mill you have the the camel and you just live right like Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing like timing is everything like I've seen this before where you'll be five seconds out for finishing the outpost and you just get shot down by that desert raider it's really difficult so villager pull on the way two spin following up he hasn't scouted this this is bad news because it's likely he's going to wrap wide around the north side of the tree line might end up that he's just a little bit too delayed with this play uh, Louis meanwhile has already triggered the tech up mm -hmm. yeah like the, the yeah reinforcements coming in so the first desert raider is just going to be there really early um, so we'll see if there's any sort of follow-up or like a delay on an important tech. Like sometimes being able to deny wheelbarrow can feel good or like a couple of units that cost some gold. Maybe an eco tech or two could get delayed by this. But otherwise, I feel like Lou's just going to get what he needs. Yeah, so the bill's sneaking around here. Wait, it, uh, that's just auto pathing, right? It looks like he actually might sneak by. It looks like the outpost should go off in time here, as long as he starts it straight away. He has got the wood for this, so Wham will be able to deny this gold out. But the other one, it's a little bit far out, but it's not insanely out of left field, right? And something we have been seeing from either players right now, the optimal build, in fact, it's the one that Marine Lord has been running, the guy who is unbeaten with seven wins on that sieve, is to actually, no matter the matchup, just play a little bit of feudal timing. Just get a few units out, like two or three horsemen, a few archers, and then go for a tech up on a delay. Yeah, the stable, the range, and then you also have the reinforcements supporting you. You just feel really, really solid, right? Um, uh, because you just have that extra military to, like, buffer it, and then you don't have to invest as much, whereas you have the mobility of those free cav units without having to, like, invest so much of your food, which just feels so good, right? It just feels so, so good. Um, it's the, uh, the Golden Age spike as well, right? Because, like, if you delay your Castle Age timing, you're going to unlock GA2, which gives you the 50% increased research speed. It's a really big deal if you're scaling to archers already, because it just means you get that upgrade 20 seconds sooner, which might not sound like a lot, but when you think your opponent's now trying to rush to punish you, 20 seconds is the difference between making or breaking a fight. And we're going to see Wim trying to trade his way to keep, like, to keep safe here, but this is going to be really hard to defend against because there's mobility on the field already, right? Well, that's, that's, that's funny spawning. Immediately able to shoot. That was cute. Yeah, I like that, that positioning <laughs> from Wham. Well, he just it's, rallied it to that side, right? That was cute. Yeah, that, that's a, like this is kind of the, the insane thing when you think about it. It's actually someone that like gets slept on with a bastards even with military wing there, right? Is you can choose which side these units, these powerful units that instantly spawn are going to come out of. So it gives you positioning advantage when your opponent's trying to dive you, if they're trying to shift sides. And, you know, this is not a lot of damage straight away, right? But what he's doing is he's denying this mining camp being taken out, being set of blaze. Curiously enough, Louis at this pace shouldn't be able to stop this from going on fire, right? I think it's going to go on fire yeah. to the tower, right? Unless he gets repaired, right? Uh, it's about but to. Like, but, like, you're not going to pull a villager if you don't have wheelbarrow here, right? Okay, he is on the way. There we go. He I'm tried one earlier. I think he could say, yeah. I think it's really important for Louis to spot the, like, screw this mining camp. Who cares, right? I think the biggest, imp most important thing is to make sure he spots the silver tree. Um, I think he has scouted uh, uh, it. Lu Lu uh, Louis, <laughs> buddy. Well, I think Wham's going to take that. I don't even know if Wham saw that, to be honest. But I mean, we'll it's, see. It's, it's not 50 resources for you, but it's definitely 50 resources and more gone for your opponent. That's a rough start, especially for a guy who's 
no doubt not going advanced uh, going for growth wing here right like when you see people eating the berries like this it's meant to be an advanced wing plane we are going to get that initial aggression we talked about archers coming out horsemen coming out as well wham so far only has the spears yeah, the Khan honestly doing work over there on the berries. The tower going up on the gold to defend it. And that first Desert Raider is now making its way over to the trade. Has to get in the range of that. Oh, he's tower getting the knight could be huge. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Too no, late. Okay. That's too late now. Louis, if he just done this trade, surely not. What? Well, <laughs> okay. I'll close this bill. off. He does get the feel. So it's definitely worthwhile. If he just got melee straight away, though, that tower never even goes up. And at that stage, like, you're just stripping Wham of any sort of detection and also any amplification to his trade speed here. Still, yeah, that's gonna hang around pay... with Big Bird. <laughs> Payback for uh, Louisville <laughs> that, that uh, was in range of the tower that he didn't notice. Balance and all things. You know what the crazy part is? Is actually, Louis, this comp is perfectly countering what Wham's doing. So he gets a little bit of a window yeah. here to poke, but sadly, not quick enough on the torch through, right? So has to back away. And this is usually where you're going to see the Ibe player just kind of slow down a bit, like not escalate more military, because something quite awkward what? has happened here for Wham. You say He's that. Oh, wait, is he There's a ram. ram. <laughs> no, that, that's ram. at home. That's at home. That's at home. Yeah, yeah. That's just to home. deal with this. Yeah. Yeah, because like he secured the gold in the outskirt, but that's not long term, right? That's one outpost, so you, you're limited. You want your primary gold so you can go up to 10 villages eventually. But like the, the issue of Wham's comp now that's really good out of Louis is that Wham has no cavalry and he's gone for trade, right? Like Keshix is your premium yeah. unit. He's now going back for it now, but he got delayed off his timing. And it means that Louis with what is basically a two thirds cav army can now just play white flanks to shut the trade. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really important. And we'll see if Louis is able to spot it. I mean, there is no trade yet, right? I think Wham is playing really patiently. He doesn't want to invest in trade that's just going to get raided so obviously he's seen that same issue that you have where it's like okay i can't actually protect my trade right now against these units that louis has so he's not going to waste his time investing in it but that does mean he is delaying that investment right so it's like his whole his whole landmark the point of it is you get trade up right and that landmark hasn't given him any value whereas there's lots of units tangible on the field because of the uh, reinforcement wing already and the spearman gonna pop out gonna get an opportunity to whale away at this ramp Archers are coming across to try and force them back inside the outpost here. So it looks like he got the value he's looking for here, right? Like, yes, the ram is pretty much dead, but what other use do you really have for this ram, right? Like, you're not going to attack the enemy base, even if you were some Mongol player that could pack up. But I think it's going to roll across and go deal with another outpost. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? What's, what use Dude. is it doing at home? It's really going to defend you well against archers, right? No. But uh, it's more the case of like, even though he's repairing it, it's kind of not necessary for the next eight minutes of gameplay. <laughs> <Yeah. You> know, <laughs> just watch it roll up his sleeve and go across the map. It's like, I'm gonna kill every Mongol building after that statement. Oh. <laughs> after that statement, it's personally <laughs> offended by you, KP. What, what have you done? How dare I oh. say that it's a worthless tool now? It's like, I, are you kidding? I'm gonna lead this army from the front. Um, Louis, in the meantime, is looking to block out the trade. So this is exactly the problem we were talking about with Wham's comp, is that he doesn't have that mobility. This is also another kind of awkward thing when you choose Silver Tree, right? Is you don't have Yam now on all that infantry mass until mm -hmm. your Castle Age. And you remember to click the tech. <laughs> you have to remember up. to get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. This is, this is interesting. I mean, Wham's being really patient here at this stage, right? He, he's saying he's basically banking on the fact that his aggression did enough i'm not sure it did in this case i'm a little scared for wham that the timing here from louis on castle age could be really really good what's uh, scaring me more is the fact that louis unlike a lot of ibe players we see at this point in the game hasn't lost the desert raiders <laughs> he's up to four at this rate by the time he goes castle he'll have six right and that's when it's worth upgrading and you don't see it much but when you do get those desert raiders up into veterancy they pack quite the punch the range damage increase the melee attack absolutely bonkers what you can do to trade lines. So that has me a little bit worried. Wham right now is coming to the outpost area. That's going to be double outpost with Arislet, so difficult to dive this area of the map. And now his rotation is difficult because of that wall that Louis is setting up between the two tree lines. Yeah, that's really tricky. Uh, most of the army for Louis was out of position, but yeah, walking right into the defended spot from Louis, it, it's just too much, right? The Ville is all just garrisoning. That's nine garrison arrows. That's going to be enough. Now the army from Louis, kind of on the backside here, but I don't know if it's in much danger it's quite mobile here and you have you, the camels you can't it. yeah like yeah. <laughs> this is what sucks is you need so many keshik to take that fight because you're up against the lancers in particular uh the desiree's rather in particular so like this issue right now i mean 
he can't trade. Like, if you check the south side neutral trade, Louis is a step ahead of Wham. He's guarding both of these sites, so there's realistically no eco inflation for Wham in this game. Oh, first trader's out. Or is Rogers. that the first trader? I think it is. I think he produced one a little bit earlier. Nice little chip there, mm. does get an eco kill. Louis is pretty much ready to go, and this is interesting, actually. He doesn't feel rushed. We aren't getting advanced from Wing. I guess we're looking at logistics or growth. Oh. Like, growth is kind of intriguing considering how much food he's already taken from near his base. Yeah. And there growth. it is. Growth. Yeah, not even needing the discount, right, uh, to get there quickly. He's feeling confident. And Wham's not up yet. Wham's not even close to clicking up, right? So Wham's going to be stuck in feudal for a long time dealing with this upgrade that is surely going to come in quite quickly, right? Um, yeah. Louis has plenty of income. Well... I mean, the, the, the crazy thing, thing about here is like the reason why you can go growth wing so confidently is there's no rush because there's trade escalating, right? Like you haven't been blocked on your counterplay. You've guarded against Wham's eco escalation. So although it seems kind of greedy, it's like, okay, if Louis doesn't need more eco, why do it? Because it's, it's kind of a free play here. Like Wham hasn't got an army that's going to break in your base. And if you just keep spamming archers, he never will because Wham would need to afford Kashyx as well to get a dive that hits. The Ram. <laughs> The Ram is just <laughs> chilling. He's like, job's he's done. A, whoa, he, he's a war hero, dude. <laughs> you know, he's got all the peg legs in this situation. Like, I remember the time I took I took on the Mongol army, pushed them back. <laughs> yeah, I got stabbed how many times? Still living, still walking, still thriving. Uh, that's funny. A way of now making his own Ram. So looking to push this tower complex on the gold mine, but it feels like it might be a little bit too late as the age up is... Surely gonna come in quite soon. And you can oh, forfeit it, right? Like if, if he attacks the outpost, whoop de doo they think the other mines. Cold, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and on top of that, can we check the golden age? Because we must be getting close to level two at this stage. Like we're deep enough in the game here. Yeah, he's five away. Make it four, right? Like it's very easy now. Just spam down a few racks. It's actually it's about to be three away. So it's probably gonna be a golem transition. I think that works really well against what Wham is doing. And you need yeah. three racks for that anyway. So you're gonna get the veterancy on your archers. 20, uh, 20 seconds sooner. You're also going to get the upgrades on things like Undermesh 20 seconds sooner. It's going to make it very difficult for Wham to find a window of opportunity here. Yeah, Wham, even, not even ahead on the uh, the Blacksmith upgrades at this stage, right? Like, he, he's all in here, and I think he's going to be a bit surprised by the size of Louis' army here, right? He's not going to be happy about this. You know, he's going to get some resources if he's just allowed to burn this, but I don't know if he wants to waste his time burning. I think he needs to run deep for Vil kills, right? Like you said, look at the eco. Yeah, 51 Vils on the field for Louis. Look at how far you'd have to rotate, though. This is the bigger problem, right? It's just such a wide wrap, and you know you're going to be cut off the moment you go around the back. Love the walls coming up from Louis to make sure there's no 360 rotation anymore. Meantime, traders are still just kind of getting blocked out by the reigning horsemen. But even if they do start trading now, like, it's not... It's not impressive, right? It's like three or four traders maximum in this game. In fact, he even loses one to just the horsemen. And time's running out, my friend. We are now 10 seconds away from that veterancy. Once that comes in, this entire army is dead. <laughs> the ram, the grizzled vet goes, hey, I'll show you guys how to deal with spearmen. I learned this in my youth ages ago, he says, as now the... I mean, vet <laughs> upgrades come in. And, it actually oh did matter. It did matter because yeah, it stopped it the cash charge again. <laughs> yeah, it did. It blocked this gap. Well, Rams on the other side. I, I guess the, the congregating at this stage. <laughs> like, who's the bigger <laughs> war veteran? I mean, it's pretty clear here, though. These Rams, not going to last yeah. too long. Desert Rays are going to move in. And the first Camel Lance is out. So this dive coming in. Wham, he needed a good hit. He's just been hit. You could argue there was a good hit in this fight, but not the way it needed to be. GG wow. instantly comes out. Louis, surgical in his execution. Not only winning the eye bids, but also now stripping away powerful mongols from wham's arsenal yeah that was really really hard to deal with i think um i think the way that he ended up playing that louis louis build everything just kind of made sense and i think you were super right about it like the timing just did not work for mongols there like the the desert raider came out and it just defended and the tower creep never happened it was just this one outpost denying one of the golds and we just saw louis say okay you're there i'm gonna go over here You've delayed your age up for it. I don't know how you play this matchup if for if you're Mongols, right? Like you, you at can't. this age, <laughs> you legit it, can't. It, it feels like you'd have to do something so radical, like that doesn't make sense, right? It feels like you'd have to yeah. not make the spearmen and just try and like age up without it. But like that's giving up so much of what Mongols are good at and so much of how Mongols are played. So 
yeah, really tricky there. Um, not really sure what Wham could have done better. Uh, pick a different set sense. is uh, where I'm gonna go. There, it it's, yeah, it's like... almost an impossible matchup. Like I, I you know, to, to put it another way, I obviously do a lot, like, a lot of content midweek on my own channel, right? And uh, Phyllis Bodo, who everyone knows, is, like the most prolific Mongols family in the game right now, pops by. And every time I'm like doing one of those casts, like I don't know how to win this matchup. So the guy who plays more Mongols than literally anyone else on the ladder right now has no clue how to win with them. It kind of says something, and it's something I've been seeing on repeat. The issue is the Ayurved's opening plays all just work so well against the Mongols' options. The only thing I think could even look remotely good is to go Deerstone and then play a compact economy as the Mongols and try to come out when you're ready. Because like the issue is anytime you choose Silver Tree, straight away you've already said to your opponent, I'm playing a wide map. But the issue you saw in that game was because Wham wasn't able to open with Keshix, he was already a mile behind. Louis was great to identify that. And we are indeed going to be getting Order of the Dented on Golden Heights. <laughs> yeah, Order versus HRE. So we got the German matchup, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What are you predicting here? Lots of Spearmen? <laughs> so this is this is where it gets weird, right? Because actually, or do you on just land, ignore it? On, well, on land, this matchup heavily favors Order of the Dragon. It's like insanely biased towards them, like 65, 70%. We don't see it much on water though. Um, I think the spearman can be very strong, but the issue I've been seeing with people trying this order the dragon build, like we saw in Mongolian Heights, you just get outnumbered, right? So what I'm curious about is if Wham has some timing in mind with spear spam that involves, say, a second racks, that would be where I'd give him the edge. That's, that's his limitation, right? HRE, very good at gathering resources, very bad at escalating production early on. So that's the thing I'm being looking for here. Um, I'm not expecting Eva to necessarily go straight for the dock. I'm curious, though, whether we're going to get some sort of proxy racks plays. Yeah, that's, that's I guess, the biggest question. It's, it's going to be, if players are investing in these Spearman Dark Age, which it feels like if your opponent does, you kind of have to. Otherwise, you're seeding water for free, basically, and then you lose map pressure. So it sort of feels like... Are players going to be building these proxy barracks, like kind of in the stealth forest? We've seen them be just right next to the dock. We've seen them be at home. We've seen them be in the middle of the map. Um, we've seen sort of all sorts of permutations of it. And I think a lot of the strategies don't really take into account exactly where it's placed. But in the end, what really matters is where the barrack is placed. So it feels like it should be on these players, like the forefront of their mind is where's my barracks going to go here? Um, and will the timings actually work for me compared to where the, the my opponent builds the barracks, right? Because there's... There's all sorts of advantages there, like the walk time to do it. That's more Idleville time. That's a delay on the first Spearman, right? Like a lot, a lot of little nuances here um, that I think are going to matter. Um, and I think that's probably going to be a lot of this game. I'd be surprised if we hit like a mid game where both players are on even footing. I think very likely we're just going to have a very one sided, like dark early feudal situation, right? So it's interesting because when you dissect it, what you realize is actually initially at the very beginning of that feudal age based on say proxy raxes from each side and the gathering rates hre has a slight edge but as you go deeper into dark age they lose that edge right because the longer you're in dark age the worse that one prelate becomes right your 40 percent buff at the start on your whole economy goes down to 35 then 30 then 25 then all of a sudden right. the base rate in in increase the order of the dragon at 28 percent is just better so like this is something that the one needs to figure out it's like how long can i afford to hang around i can't give him fishing for free surely that would like be wild unless i right. gets some sort of you know two third cheap split in which case maybe he has a bird grave rush in mind because one thing i've noted on this the reason why all the dragon is so favored is i'd say the meta revolves quite heavily around feudal and early castle right now that's where order the dragon peaks the worse it gets it, it, for them is when you're an imp plus on both sides they're all about momentum between feudal and castle and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it right like golden cuirass men at arms are bonkers strong for the um order the dragon on the flip side you don't get a counter to that until you're in castle age and ramped up to like 15 to 20 men at arms right so i think what would be interesting to me is if wham's got some sort of fast castle build in mind where he just completely ignores water yeah, that could be a really interesting adaptation, but I feel like giving away water, I mean, at some point you have to deal with it, right? Like, I feel like letting your opponent have five or six fishing ships for 10 minutes while UFC feels really bad. It's not um, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the good, I mean, it's kind of different on Golden Heights, especially this version of Golden Heights right now. The the Those three deep fish are really far away. Like, they're really, really far from the dock. So they're not like, 
as efficient as we used to think, maybe, because it's so far, but... I mean, if it's uncontested, you're not even investing into it, basically. It's just it's just going to pay off for sure, right? So I guess we'll have to see how these players view it. And wow, immediately we see a barracks, so... <laughs> Here we go. Game number yep. two. Wham versus Louis. Old versus new. And we are going to get that racks on one side. Now, the, the question mark, Louis, he's the one we anticipated going for it. Here's an interesting thought. Why hasn't he dropped a racks yet? I don't know. Uh, maybe... <laughs> he's, just going, proxy? he's legit going straight for it. I, this has to be proxy racks, right? There's no way you drop a dock straight away. That would be wild. Well, I mean, the Mongolian Heights build is you build the dock first, yes. right? And then you're gathering yeah, shorefish. Maybe he's just going to do that build. But that build hasn't been very good, but only against Mongols. So maybe it works against HRE. Here is his idea. M my thing is, I don't know how uh... much you practice this build order, right? Like, I think against this in this matchup, like how often have you played this? Like I've never, have you no, played this matchup on this map? I, this I, I, have, I have not seen it this played once between people in practice. But like, so, so hear me out. The dock first build, I actually hate on Mongolian Heights. I think it's bad there. I think it's really I think bad. So too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's bad, but that's what people are doing, right? Like, but... I'm, I'm not the pro player, right? Like, I'm not the one like developing the strats, right? So clearly, they see merit to it, right? I, I think they've just been lying to each other. Like, you remember how Vortex <laughs> said, like, Vortex on his tier list, and he put Order the Dragon as Nest tier Civ and hasn't picked it once in this tournament. Just saying, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't trust them all the time. <laughs> The, I think the reason it works better here, though, is like on Mongolian Heights, you're walking towards each other. So like the racks on a delay feels really weird. But doing it this way, where you racks afterwards, would work what? a lot better, right? Where is he just, going? There's no is way he going to build it far away? Like, I mean, is he going to no wall way... it in? No, he's going to wall it into the corner, maybe? Yeah, like, but, but I was about to say, there's no way you just go fast feudal here, right? That wouldn't work. It would be too slow. But this well, is... she would have walked home if she wanted this to This is really home. slow. This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, he's going to have reinforcement speed, but, like, Wham is already there. The, the only benefit that Louis can get here is that Wham doesn't see Spearman. So Wham stops producing his own, right? That's mm -hmm. that's the, the goal here. And then you surprise him. As the dock is going down, you surprise him with, like, two or three o OTD um, spears. Surely Wham, like, just doesn't stop pumping, though, right? Like, his mindset's got to be, I, I need a lot of spears here because there could be a delayed play, right? Ah. Uh... Dude, you say you that, but he has food and wood. This is the plan. If you get three Order of the Dragon Spears right now, quickly out, you can defend this. But the Vill is walking home, which means all Wham needs to do is get the dock burning. I kind of don't agree with sending the Vill home here. I feel like uh, maybe he's just giving it up. But why is he turning Spearman? Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> This so, meta has lost me. Okay, but hear me out, hear me out, right? Like, if, if you make it the other way, where you don't, like, have this racks on delay, you just have the dock, and your opponent does this play, right? He still has his dock afterwards, but by doing it this way around, you can still contest him, beat his spears with your spears, because yours just are better, and then you take a dock away. So it's like, yes, you're losing 150 wood, but so is the HRE player. And if you remember what my statement was before, the longer Dark Age goes on, the worse it is the HRE. We're already at a stage where he's not buffing his entire economy, right? Half his eco isn't buffed with 40%. So at this point, his economy is already worse than Louis. Is uh, he what? Okay, thank God. I thought he was going to try to go Feudal Age first and then upgrade. That would have been a mistake. But It's it's definitely a, pecu a peculiar build. Like, I'm, I'm, I know you've got big reservations because of it. But, like, once he has free Spearman here, you if you look... Fight. Yeah, Wham doesn't yeah. even have all his spears here. He split them up a bit. No, my only thing would have been, I probably would have been greedy. I would try to go now, right? I would go right now, now that the dock <laughs> is burning. Yeah. And then I would have the vill to repair. But he's going to go at four spearmen. Mm -hmm. What overkill? What? But he guarantees the dock kill, right? And then Wham... Yes, like the... yeah, he just guarantees the win, right? And, and it's kind of escalating the pain, right? Because like you're watching Wham actively invest at that point he's adding in these ships he's like oh life is good and then there's no value there but can we check has wham actually added a single fishing boat yet dude are you no. kidding me they both faked each other <laughs> and here <laughs> comes see it now but like you just walk away yeah like wait yeah but you're still gonna lose the dock right like, there's, there's no way you get an archer ship out before that dock goes down we won't talk about that guy he was he was he was drunk Our... on the yeah there's no way you get one up but another dock could go up and Wham just has to, because the Vill is still here. Like, that's what I mean. Like, if Louis just had his Vill here and he could have repaired his dock right now, 
and then he could have maybe I don't know. I don't want to judge it too much. I feel like Louis cooking. Yeah. He's cooking something real spicy here, and I'm liking it. I'm just, I'm learning. This is me actively learning. <laughs> it's okay, like, what is he's this? He's building the extra dock. He's building the extra he's dock. He's found it. Side. Yep. He, so he's found the rack, but look what's happening up here. Walls are going up, and this is an yeah. issue. Louis did not send an extra spearman up to check this. So although he's burning a dock away, you may notice a big difference between these two players. One already has a little progress bar towards age two. The other's just like, oh no, what have I done with these spears? And then that chapel's just going to amplify it. You were talking early, early on about how you know by the by a certain point the prelate kind of scales out of the economy. Well, look at, I mean, the chapel's going up, and suddenly all of Wham's villas are going to be inspired again, right? And suddenly his economy is going to be much better. Um, I feel like than Louis. That villager right there. I, I tell you what, he could run marathons. He's coming back oh? across to try and get another dock up. Spim stabs does protect the racks here, so I, I don't know if Wham will be able to torch this, but. He's got what he wanted, right? And yeah, Louis just discovered the wall is up. This game just got very difficult. He needs to rush that dock up and he needs to be super quick about it, considering he's about 20 seconds away from an archer ship blitzing his face off. Yeah, and then the water's gone, right? I mean, we'll see. It looks like it looks like Louis actually wants to send the Ville back forward and build another dock. Yeah, yeah. Like he's been walking There's for a while, yeah, but there he's is. hesitating because the spears. I think you legit just have to go. You've got extra health on that on that uh, villager. No, it should yeah. be hard for him to die. The problem now is you wait so long, the feudal age came through, right? Like Wham actually has better spearmen here. I think the best thing you do here is just dive in and kill that villi. If, if, if Louis lets you, that's <laughs> nice positioning from Louis. Going to be blocking to protect that vill. That's really clean. Oh my God. Oh my God. His scout's getting in the way as well. It's too late. Louis, he's going to get that dock up. No uh, way can you stab this quick enough, surely. Village up. Low on HP, but not low enough. Job done. Wow. That was huge for Louis. Okay. 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 I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. This is interesting. And here's the thing, right? Like, wham, open with the archer ship. So Louis like, is okay. Back. <laughs> he gets 40 food. A little oh, bit more food cute. in the bank. He's got also another kind of interesting thing here is like right now, Wham is escalating uh, his archship count, right? That's not great if, let's say, Louis decides the undermesh is worth it quite quickly. He's going for a second dock though. This is interesting because Louis can now shift those spearmen and attack you on land. Cool. And the double galley going to get countered by the single hulk here. Interesting. Where's the gold, by the It's on the backside. Okay, but here's a problem right now. Yeah, he needs to get archers out ASAP. He knows those spearmen have to be doing something else now, right? They're not burning the wall. So he needs to rush out a few archers. Two or not three archers he needs isn't a lot. Be enough. Yeah. yeah, he needs a lot of archers here. He needs like six or seven. Uh, and it's going to take some time. But oh, I don't know wait. how many windows... Oh, the wood line is just open here. Wait. Yeah, re remember that little short cliff side that was nice for Wham getting early sheep? <laughs> now it's bad for this. Naval engagement, though. There's a demo for Wham. The galley getting focused down. The demo could move in soon. Nice bait and switch here. Wham is playing this super clean. What? Wait. Uh, is he? Louis getting away with repairs here. The village is repairing. Oh He's not even being attacked right now. Demo's going to come out. It's going to be a push in here. Doesn't oh, get the, the hit. Double whiffs. Wait, that's actually huge. That oh, villager. My. Dude, that villager just saved the day. I can't believe that. That's he crazy. had no ship in range. And the only time he got hit is when the random shots attacked it, right? Like, remember, wow. that villager already lost 20 health to the spearman. He lost, like, what? An extra eight health in that engagement. Wow. That was really, really good for Louis. Like, that was really, really, really good. Uh, this this is looking rough now for Wham. He's got archers being chased by the spearman. Um, the man in arms just getting <laughs> absolutely wrecked there. And yeah, between the fishing ship healing there, the dock repair and the vill, mm -hmm. he was able to sustain there. And I don't think Wham fully respected how much healing was coming in on that ship. And uh, this is where we reach that ugly phase of the game, right? As like now if the water is kind of decided, like let's say like neither player gets the fish, just keeps going back and forth there. You're still at a base instinct down to your standard land game between these two sieves, right? Like the extra resources going towards that aggression. Order the dragon are favored there. With this build, with the mine work, and men at arm spam. If they get into Golden Karras, get five or six of these bad boys going in, what does Wham have to deal with that? Like, even five, six minutes from now, he won't have much. Yeah. Yeah, this... This feels like Order the Dragon is going to be in a very good position very soon. 
Um, mm. I, I think Demo? it just depends on the. Oof. Just shy. Wow, now he's efficient here though. Wow. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah. the galleys are quite pricey, but like getting two demos in return isn't too bad here. It looks like Wham should be able to break this now unless he gets caught off guard by a demo coming out. So it's all a matter of timing. Oh, Wham has <laughs> a lot You say that. <laughs> As you say that, a demo pops out for Louis, but Wham is paying attention here. So they will just back off. And this is going to be a bit of a stalemate for a while. Both players just on one dock, right? Actually, did did Wham add another dock for production? He did. He added it a it looks ago. like he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, so I'm he should sure be able to out that's compete, been scoured, right? Yeah, like, I don't think that's even been scoured. Demo is going to be a whiff. I, I think, like, Louis, he hasn't really made a convincing move on Lana at all, right? Like, it looks like his goal here was to get Castle Age in a really cheeky fashion. But that's going to cost him water, right? Like, this should just be him wiped out now. It should. This dock is going to be sticky to take care of. And there's a demo. Oh, Wait, there's a demo wow. in the queue. There's a demo in wow. the queue. What? Okay. That should okay. have been worse. There wasn't a manual detonation straight away. That could have been two springles, but that... wham. <laughs> my, heart, things to my heart. My heart can't handle that. Oh my gosh. My, you should have seen me. I was just like, <sighs> yeah, that was panic in my voice. Uh, that, that demo being in the cube. You never want to go that close to a dock, like ever. Mm. You just have to respect the demos, especially with hulks. Like, whew. But way I'm able to get out of it with only one loss there. Um, Okay. All right. It looks like Louis done per uh, building on the water now. And, and Wham knows She's it. Gonna so that, give it. that villager dying there was moving to wall off on the relics because he now knows what mm -hmm. this is going to be. This mm -hmm. is like one of the annoying points in the game for Order of the Dragons because they suck at relic races because unlike the HRE, they can't prep prelates before they age up. But with the way this game is played out, like Wham hasn't had that classic, uh, like classic prelate prep, right? Like he's just been stuck pushing everything on water. Instead, Louis, um... these five spearmen that won him the early game, aggression, have persisted for the last several minutes. Wow. I mean, he could break in. He could have broken in here, but he chose to just hit the wall that was already up. This, that could have been really bad for Wham. I mean, Wham has like no military, so he's going to be relying on the TC to defend that whole chapel, and he just has to ha hope these walls hold. Oh, the boar, though. The vills on the boar are completely exposed. He Not a ton know. of military to kill anything, but he could force him back. He, he Meanwhile, the Akin Chapel. Like, he, these issues, he doesn't know. The scout's dead. Like, Wan doesn't actually have any vision. If you check on the map, he's running pretty blind in here. Regnitz is on the way, but he's looking mm -hmm. in all the wrong places right now. And well, Regnitz is going to follow up on a delay from Wan. Golden Kuras is also being prepped. So, Louis, quite interesting, considering he's only got one men at arms out. And I'm kind of curious if you really want to play mass men at arms into, like, a prolonged castle, especially if your opponent's HRE with fishing. Yeah. It's tricky. Yeah, because H3 with fishing now. The, the Regnets, able to get away with the Regnets here too. Um, that's interesting, because yeah, w Wim's going to have Prelates pre-positioned. So as soon as he's up, he's going to get three Relics here, right? That um, is the he's sending a. them now. Uh, it doesn't look like he's done that. Oh yeah, he's got one on the left. He's yeah. going to get the one on the right. Um, it's... It Still could actually fun enough be a free split for Louis because this prelate on the yeah. left side should not be able to get back. Like, Louis would have to completely miss and whiff here. It's funny because it seems like he didn't notice the prelate went out ahead of time, right? Like, he's attacking yeah. the wall instead of walking over. And there it is. Wait. Wait. Louis, Louis, no. Not like this. Well, he still can get three. The one in the middle of the map. Well, didn't he wall that one in? In the middle? No, 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 no. no. It's not walled in. I think but he like, wanted to, but... The, no, he was trying to... So there was a wall-in attempt by Wham on the left side one, but no real attempt by Louis. It's going to be a 3-2 yeah. split for Wham. Yeah, we'll oh, see this. Dude. Yeah, that's really good. He might be able to intercept with a knight, but it's kind of a punt, right? Like, realistically, he's the only one with a scout, so you can kind of sniff things out, but it's still a lot of ground to cover for just one guy. Oh, we got a foot race. I mean, Wham's going to win it by a lot, but it's still a foot race. It's always so funny. Could, could you imagine being, like, the pro on the other side, like, running this marathon? Did you, this like, guy? see him? Did you see <laughs> him? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the equivalent of you running the marathon, the other guy just took a taxi. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, he's just going to put it in the dock. That's well smart. Played. You don't have to take it all the way home. Mm -hmm. I he mean, still gives and the, gold. The, the, the ships are going to protect the dock, right? That's really smart. Holy, that is high IQ. I'm sure players are doing that, but I, I never think of things like this. Wait, there's no way. There's, uh, you shouldn't get that one. It looks like there's a product coming out from red. So Louis will get the other one on the left side. No, wait. it's a spin. Oh my God. Please do not lose the one closest to your base. And that, <laughs> I mean, that one's that. basically free still. Wait, 
Can the is the prelate's running in? You say it's free. It should be. There's no There's way. A knight. Yeah. There's a knight. There's a knight in crossbows. It's There's too also much. another prelate coming out. This oh, one concerns me though. Like I can't. That's believe. a big boy knight. That is a big boy knight though. He's gonna like two shot this prelate. Three and shot. goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Well, Lowe's gonna come out no, in the face. No, Louis, what? Uh, what? hold. Okay. okay, 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 okay. We're good, we're good, we're good. That was almost scary. <laughs> almost scary. A little stretch there, Louis was, but he noticed. He noticed. He's way too solid to, like, let that happen. Oh, man. It's still, like, so this game's kind of weird in that you'd be like, okay, GG, you know, Wham got three relics, he's got fishing, but I don't think it's necessarily over just yet. Like, he doesn't have a counter, a solid counter yet to these Gilded Knights. We're already up to four of them. Wham has basically got the same number, and he's meant to produce a lot quicker. This dive feels questionable from Louis. He's going to be losing a lot of pretty expensive units if this fight continues. Uh, what else do you do? Like, you, you know if this game now drags out, it is going to be mean, an HRE win. You have to try and do damage. Was that damage? I mean, like, damage, damage to yourself. Damage, yeah, to himself. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, it's okay. Like, it, you need to you need to trade, right? I guess that's the idea. But that's a lot of knights with vet spears in the back, too. They're taking this a lot is... of damage, though. He's going to have to retreat from this. I mean, the crossbows are actually, like, doing decent on the backside. But he even abandoned them like that. It's kind of surprising, right? Like, well, like he just leaves the them now. Well, two almost dead. Yeah. He's going to try to raid down. He's going to block out the Prella on the sacred site. New Knight is going to come out. Louis, the problem right oh, here is, nice. you know, he hasn't got, like, great gold income. Admittedly, he's holding on to a 1,000, but realistically, in the grand scheme of things, like, it's not a lot of passive income, right? And that's problematic because the way that he's losing prelates and then the fact he doesn't have as much gold to replace them, it means it's very difficult to just make these knights go the distance, right? Like, kind of a, an Abbey of Memes effect where you drag them home and heal them. Instead, when I see Louis with this much gold, I'm starting to wonder, is, th is there kind of, like, a little tick in his brain saying, go Imperial Age? For Louis, yeah, absolutely. Uh, on Order of the Dragon, it, it it feels like this stage of the game, like you're saying, like there's just a timer before your units just it feels like they don't work. Like late castle age doesn't feel like a good time for Order of the Dragon. Personally, I always like to just go to him pretty quickly here. He could actually afford it if he had a market, but it looks like he's just gonna wait for the food naturally, right? Yeah, because um, like the the thing about to your point around why castle age feels weird is like this opening feels bad because Gilded Knights like. You have to raid so efficiently with them to feel like it's worth the investment consistently, right? Especially when you start to reveal it, your opponent's going to be building a counter. Knights on the other side, just much cheaper. It means you typically have more of them, and that means you can spread out across more ground to punish. Love this from Louis, though. The double outposts, this is what makes the Order of the Dragon more of an aggressive sieve, is the way they aggressively farm the map. They're able to be more efficient with their garrison spots compared to their cousin sieve. Yeah, it's, it's really healthy for Louis to have those outposts up and around and able to just make use of the map food. And yeah, like Wham isn't able to go to the middle deer himself, right? Like he just can't. Uh, the one night on it would just be devastating. He also has kind of delayed his crossbow production, interestingly. Uh, he prioritized a big spearman mass, which I think I like. But at the same time, having like 10 crossbows here would... Just shut down, I feel like, the play for Louis really, really nicely. So if he can get up to that number, I think things will look really good for him. It's uh, attack and defend logic, right? He wants the spears to hold his base, his knights to raid. He, if he uh. goes crossbows, he doesn't have that. Charge coming in for the Guild of Knights, though. Outpost not up. Wham! Quick to pull away, but these guys just hit so hard. And Where are the spears? I feel like most of them ran out to the mid-map. Woo! Wham, no. Wham, just getting... Oh, actually, a smart surround here, maybe. Gets one knight. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a fair trade, though. I mean, it's double the price for those knights, right? The Spearman now in defense. These knights, though, are tanky boys. They don't really care. Denying the food is really good here, but Louis just going to go up to Castle with the Swabia. Or, sorry, in with the Swabia, right? And he's pretty much ready to pull the trigger. He's got a lot of gold in reserve as well, so could look towards some upgrades. Even adding Lance Next, I really like this. You're up against Spears and a few crossbows. Lance Next are ridiculously tanky in that situation. We also have to remember that in the recent patch, the Elspeth? dragons... I, this, dude, like, no. No, okay, okay. I was like, <laughs> get, why is he get, stalking get food? Get out of like, my why? point. <laughs> you I thought... Well, it'd be so ballsy. Imagine just putting it forward right now on, like, the sacred site. Oh, but you mean, I guess like, you just this can. game's over, you just pull the villagers, you build an, an elves back in their base, you're like... Yeah, like, you it? just... I thought... I mean, he was <laughs> stocking the food. That's a lot of fishies for Wham. He's got to be feeling good about that. Now, and yes, this... I did just call them fishies. Deal little with fishy, it. Little fishy wishies? He did get well, the upgrade, too. We saw that earlier, yeah. Uh, so pretty well, efficient well, here. Well, he gets fishies. Louis looking to get his wishies here. He's up in Imperial Age. 
He <laughs> has got a thousand stones. So this isn't just a greedy now I dive and get kill play. He has got the ability to get a keep dropped. In fact, can we check where, where it is? I think it? it's to the right side of the regnants here by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a smart spot. Just hold that front. Um, it does leave the resources on the right pretty exposed. A lot of access to gold is about to be cut off when the gold in his base runs out. There's one on the south, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we'll see. The keep will go up just fine. Yeah, it and kind we're of gonna start like the keep placements. doesn't really secure anything, right? Like, it, it, it protects no, you against it the does. rush play, but it doesn't it really holds secure the any middle, resources. And then your army is free to play the right more. So, it, like, indirectly secures, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, typically, when you get a keep like this, you want it to secure a new resource as well, right? Because you mentioned the gold. The gold is going to be running out quickly. You're now playing all of the dragon and building land snack with two relics. You're going to need a lot of gold very soon. And although you say you can protect the right side against this army, right now he doesn't have the solution. So there is going to be a little bit of idle time. And what worries me is whether Louis can actually get enough land snack together to take back the gold veins. Yeah, this is interesting. The ram now from Wim, I find spicy as heck. Is he going to ram down that keep? He's, his units are getting hit by the spray of the <laughs> That, just okay, cancels think... it. He's like, no, this ram is dumb. I know, I know. He's, he says, walking away, shaking his head. No, this was a bad idea. You know, are going like, to need, I think, I think bigger was, uh... siege than that. I don't think rams work at this stage. Was that maybe oh one of the gosh. situations where he prepped it before the tech up came out? He's like, well, I bought it. I might as well use it, right? <laughs> it's like just one of those situations because mm -hmm. looks like he's backed away entirely. Wham is going to be following the shadow of Louis up into Imperial Age. Not a bad timing. Um, and this is where the game gets kind of dicey. It's like, you know, Order of the Dragon are very favored in this matchup in the early game, even in the mid game. But when you get into the Imperial Plus stage, that's where the HRE has quite a bite to it. And what matters then, if Order of the Dragon want to win in Plus, they basically need like three quarters of the gold on the map. Because if you how can't is... scale hand cannoneers, you're in trouble. Yeah, but how is Louis consistently getting away with this? Like he always has Vils on the map and yet he's only lost one. Like how are these Barry Vils not dead? Like, wham, build a scout, please. Like, like you just walked by another group of vills, and I feel like it would just be game-ending earlier. Maybe now that the swabby is up, it's less so, but, like... Knights? Yeah, the Wait. knight's gonna get a lot of value here. Did he complete the wall? Because that might be a quick torch roof. Okay, it's half HP, which is a few there's enough. There's enough defenders here. I don't think that the run-through would be... Well, it'd be annoying <laughs> if the knights can get a lot of damage in. They're gonna take They're so long. tanky. Not tanky enough. Spears should be able to clear them up because they are actually just not attacking back. Another interesting thing on the south side. Oh, uh, fight Wham. on the south. Wham's built rams, right? <laughs> he's built rams down here. Ooh. Okay, so he's not giving up the gold. Louis. Oh, this fight is... <sighs> yeah, but watch this. Lance neck. Here come the big boys. Look for a swing. <laughs> this is scary. This is Horseman. very scary. Oh, these no, lance necks are going to eat. Oh, no, 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 run, run. Oh, they're all dead. They're all dead. They can't even oh kill the gosh. horsemen. They're so bloody tanky. Come on. Oh. And that's, that's good eating. That's mm. some good grub right there for those lanch neck. They are well fed now. Wham's whole engagement force killed, and I don't know if he got any kills in return really there. You know, like, like, there's a few horsemen on the field, right? Yeah, you know, that like when you crazy. get one of those those big German sausages and you like slice it down and the cut's so clean. That's Lance Necked in that very moment, All right? They, so sharp, man. Like, just click on them, see the stats on these units. They're kind of insane. They recently got a small buff. They got a 10 HP increase mm -hmm. overall. Uh, so like, it doesn't scale even higher on imp, but it's still 10 uh, HP more. Not a bad increase, right? It means you can survive an extra few spear stabs. And they mm -hmm. slice through so quickly. The only thing I'd say that Louis is missing here. No inspired war attack. I've noticed that he tends to neglect this tech, whereas most of the most successful dragon players are actually optimizing with that in their build. 15% is a lot on these units, considering how high their base damage is. It is. It is a lot. Um, they can be countered with enough ranged mass, but when I'm building hand cannons here, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, I don't know what else he's supposed to do, I guess. I think you have to. I mean, against the full melee comp, Ribalds. Yeah. Honestly, it's... Ribalds. A few could uh, be good, but eh, maybe not against uh, the slice of the Lanch Neck. Yeah, I don't know. This is build, tricky yeah. if you're Wham. It's like, do you want to build Ribaldequins when, like, you're up against a Culverin Civ, right? Like, I mean, or just even Springles in general. It, it does feel a little bit weird. I love that you're thinking outside the box, but, you know, that's one of those things where it kind of feels like it's so expensive to put you in the box, whereas Hand Cannoneers are also more mobile. 
And you have to remember, like, one of Atrey's advantages here in the late game is going to be mobility. Their infantry are faster. The other thing that is a disadvantage for the Dragons is mobility, because they have less troops to mobilize across the map. It means if you turn this into kind of like a spread wide type game, that's where we've seen Order of the Dragon losing a lot, because they just don't have the raw military count to mirror those moves. Yeah. I would actually love to see Wham go to the Shorefish. I've been watching his, his fishing ships. They are just so inefficient right now on the deep fish. Also, I, I think he's going to have to go to the shorefish soon. Like, wait, can also, Winston, can, can Atri even build robots? No. <laughs> wait, I, uh, you know, I, I don't, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm not real. I'm not real. I'm not a human. It's okay, guys. Um, Winston I'm not a real AI, person. You, you know how this is. They, they, they're real. learning. We'll get them there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not real. Don't ask me. Lesson. Don't ask some questions. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Volker. Don't ask. I, I'm, we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. Chat, you can roast me. I, I permit the roasting. That was dumb. That was dumb. Um, just you move know what on. It was. Everybody you, you, should just you, move no, on. No, no, no. You know what it is. Winston, you're used to seeing these HRE cannon emplacements. Kill armies so quick. You're like, wow. No. Better than Robotica. That wasn't even it. That wasn't even it. <laughs> I... I didn't think that was the problem. The thing is, I, never mind. A lot of my games against the Civ were with Jean. Never mind. Moving on. Just move on. Everybody. Okay. Move so past, let, let's move know. on to about the fact that, like, Louis, not too bad on the economy level. You have to remember he's 28% more efficient with everything. Wham's not going to be matching that. But this is where the relics really start to make the difference. Like, this is where you have to fight tooth and nail to access gold. One thing that's rough for me right now is Wham's having all his attention drawn to the left side, while Louis is now secured a much later phase of the game with this 8k gold in the center. It means that although Wham is first in the hand cannon is, it doesn't mean that Louis can't follow. In fact, it's kind of curious. I'm wondering what Louis is planning here. So far, he's massing spears. I've got a weird feeling we're looking at like a siege spearman push, almost like a, a weird premium Chinese build. Yeah. I guess. I mean, Wham's really recovered his pop nicely here. This fight might be kind of tricky for Louis. Like, the land stick mass is just gone. There's only three left. What, can we take on his farms? Because I'm also getting worried about his food state. This is... That's fine. <laughs> I, I, oh, no, like, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's kind of yeah. depressing when you realize that he's got all three Ecotex and that's that's his food income right there. Like, <laughs> the numbers don't really yeah. support this. Mango is going to be defended. Um, un unfortunately, Ooh. everyone had to die to do it. Big shots, though. Not really. Big enough. Uh, no. Not big enough. Not big enough. And this wall is just going to get torched down with only a little bit of HP in it. Wait, or or, or it could go up. That's also an option here, Winston. Apparently, well, I'm, I don't I don't think you can see him. <laughs> uh, he's just going to ram it down. The rams have been working. This is a wild play. I love it. Okay, hear me out. Like, playing Siege actually makes a lot of sense on this map because of how short the route is to your opponent's base. So, like, I actually don't mind the idea Lou's coming up with. And it also fixes the other problem, which is he has terrible food income. So, like, if you're... Playing CGQ mode, you don't really need much food, right? You just need like a, a cheap front line. Wow, I that outpost just, <laughs> just got torched. I mean, like, talk about sending a message when you have that many bills on it. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. That's what a message. Some of these walls. <laughs> I'm loving it. Uh, it's like something you're really cool. seeing, right? Because like, I think uh... he needs to buy time so he can actually make units, right? Yes. I, I think he doesn't know what to build, which is a lot of my issue when I play Order of the Dragon. I never know what to make. Like, look at his production queue. He's got one bombarded queue. He's got some res. He's just generically doing some upgrades at the moment. What what unit does he train here? Like, what works? I think it's really tricky to figure that out. You know, you would have thought after that Numidon series where he played Order of the Dragon, he would know all the answers by now, considering he was like the nutty professor in that game. I think he built every single unit at least twice in different comps. I think um, he's just going to play Siege. Like, he's I just mean, queuing up sure. Warming and Siege Spear, just try and That's hold with the AoE it. damage and hope it works. So so this this is like extra level of, of value on the walls, right? It's like the walls, Vanganels can shoot over them. Colruns get blocked by walls. So if you choose your location right, like we've already seen recently how Springles get countered by Mangos. Same thing can happen here. Maybe. If he uses the wall. Yeah, may may maybe. <laughs> it's not guaranteed here. The Culverins are very good against them. Although Louis is just now finishing Siege work, so I think it's no longer one shot from the Culves. Right. Not um, 
so it's it should be pretty healthy now for Louis. But it's still tricky to take this fight. This is an expensive dive by Wham. Like, he's, he's no, choosing the, the hardest way to try and do this, right? Like, this is a cannon line. He's got double outpost with cannon. He's got keep as well. I don't think there was, like, a worse direction you could have chose to go here. I get what Wham's trying to aim for, but it does mean Louis is more easily getting that gold on the right side to stay on this game. He is trebbing at the same time and ramming. So Wham's plan here, I think, is just to push through and use his eco advantage. Meanwhile, some of these keeps going to get the pressured on both sides of the map. I mean, Louis can't be feeling too comfortable at this stage, right? He's just trying to get Siege out. This is tricky. Just realized how confusing. Don't let this happen again. Wait, no. This can't happen again. He can't Louis? keep getting away with this. Louis, defend your Siege. No, Louis, L please. Louis, Louis. But he has please. Siege works, Winston. It's fine. It's just, it, just shoot it. Just, just shoot. And these are Swabia Vills. It's like 12 food. It, 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 Wham doesn't care about these Vills. Has he deleted many of the fishing boats for pop space? He should have, right? Yeah, most mm, of yeah, them. Yeah, you should get he rid deleted, of most of it, right? There were yeah. like 20 in there. So yeah, he definitely deleted a bunch. Farms are definitely better at the stage. Um, what's impressive is actually Louis, after all those food conundrums, it turns out, you know, you go for several years without food, you learn how to appreciate food, it more because he's got better food income now at the stage. So not too bad, but that's going to be temporary, right? Like HRE, Arkham will usually win out. Mm -hmm. um, the difference here is it looks like Wham forgot about his food techs. Yeah. It's... It's nice when you have all the upgrades on Order of the Dragon, but it feels like it's going to fall a little short here unless he figures something out with his army comp, right? I think, I think that's what's the most alarming to me here is that it doesn't seem like he still knows what to train. Now he's popped on 10 archers and 17 spears. That should actually deal pretty well with the hand cannons. They shoot really, really fast, so if he does get that fair fight he's looking for, it should be okay. But I think by the time he takes that fight, he's going to lose most wait, of his defensive wait, buildings, right? Wait, why is he getting Bodkin arrows? The bolts. Because he wants to then make crossbows. Uh, to uh, are you sure we're just not lost in translation? He's like, oh yeah, Bodkin arrows. Arrows, like Gilded Archers. I, I, I don't know, I'm going to have to check the localization. He might be thinking, too. yeah, he might be thinking that works on the arrows, the archers, but I'd be really surprised. That's... Like it, I mean, he's attacking the siege with archers right now, so like. <laughs> I would... Yeah, maybe he thinks. I mean, but we'll see. Maybe he'll queue up some crossbows. That's um, the buff we need on the dragon. Let's just let archers get the plus. It could be that it's just one of the last few upgrades at the mine work as well. Well, actually, no. He's still got a whole bunch of upgrades left. Huh. Yeah, he's well. He, he could consider melee techs, which might not be a bad idea for guys spamming spears. Archer mask will do well. Um, not, nice thing up against hand cannon is you can get the extra scale armor, right? So plus three ranged mm -hmm. armor means you're actually quite tanky. He's gonna stand his ground here. So Mangoes are just gonna run away. Culverin count favoring Wham at the stage. And you know what would be really nice at this point in the game that would help a lot, Winston? Bodkin arrows. Those would be great right about now. But you need. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. The relic gonna get heisted away. This is very relevant, actually. That relic being taken to safety is a big deal. Um, because <laughs> there's a prelate right there for Wham. He wanted that. That's a big swing in these HRE mirrors. It also just means more keeps with added range, especially with those bombard emplacements. It, it just matters quite a lot. So good for Louis that he's able to recover that. His resource okay. float is looking really healthy. It it's is. But, I think he's found the comp. I think it's but, Spear Archer. But Winston, there is an element of gold in here, and we have to be conscious of the fact, like gold-wise, the thing that Wham is at least doing on the side, he's munching those 8Ks close to yeah. Louis' base. So that is going to be a problem if this game drags out too long. So better that Louis now, having found the solution, finds a way of breaking fast. And unfortunately, Wham says, if you're going to find a solution, I'm going to change the script. We're switching now into Men at Arms that handle these Gilded Archers a lot better. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, th they also just might be too weak to all the defenses here. We'll see. There's also a lot of mangonel still. So, like, a couple good hits there could be really bad. But we'll see. I think I think Wham should be okay with this tech switch. It should at least be a decent surprise. On paper, it works really well against Spear Archer. So, we'll see. But there's Lanch next getting added in by Louis. Oh. And that's going to not feel good. Not feel good at all. No, and this is, by the way, like he's been defending like this without the army tactics. That's now coming. So these spearmen, this front line just got a lot more tanky. And now there's Lanch next mixed into there. So if they start getting good hits, actually, they're oh, not yeah. there yet, I think. No, they are, right? I think he's got one. It's hard to spot yeah, them. Yeah, you, you can see the golden poker. Yeah. Mm, 
I think there was maybe one, but he died. It looks like he's just spearman now. So he's going to chase the goblins away. Gilded Archers are the, the true victors in this fight. Slowly but surely just whittling down those men arms. And now Wham says, oh wait, Elite Army Tactics is a thing in this game. So still a minute out for him, which is just kind of rough considering you went for a men at arms spam before it was the most efficient play. Yeah, but at the same time, Wham's economy is set up to spam men at arms infinitely, right? Like, this isn't going to be something that comes at the cost of his gameplay later. Right? It's not like it's a huge siege switch, or it's not like all of his hand cannons died, like they just did. Um, which is actually, like, <laughs> meaningful gold losses, right? Yep. So Man at Arms dying before also, you have all the Also, by, by the bad. way, I, I just realized yeah. someone we Marching never checked. Drills? Yeah, because we just assumed, right? <laughs> it's like, they're doing all this running. I'm sure they have it already. Apparently, uh -huh. Wham! is only now getting marching drills after building, I want to say, over, like, it's like, like 150 plus units that would have benefited from this. Zorn how coming in as well for Louis because he does have that mine work. So, oh my god, um, it's also worse because like now that I'm looking at his text, notice that Wham is fully neglecting melee. Doesn't yeah. even have the the melee defense, melee attack, like all these things would be really nice, especially considering like the melee mosh pit is now becoming more and more important. And Louis, it's a complete switch up here. Also, oh, getting added this in. This fight could be what? so good. <laughs> that fight could have been so good for Louis if that was open right now and he just went in. I actually really like Louis' switch here, by the way. Like, the Spearman are tanky, but nowhere near as comparative as the Horseman, right? So, like, this is now just about creating a damage soaker for your Zornhal Lance Neck to clear up. Uh oh. I smell a lot of Dead Man at Arms on the horizon. Like, That's a fine. lot they're, of Dead Man at Arms. It's just Ram. Ram's got all oh, those guys. Yeah, those guys are a oh. problem. Oh, wait, wait. No, he's just attacking the Rams! <laughs> oh, no. Using the Rams as bait. Away. Wait, 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 hear me out, Winston. This is the master strategy. It's the it's the uh, Zornhau clown car. You just put your lance neck inside, and then when they come to melee it, you jump out. Instead, he's going to run in under the keep. Surprisingly enough, even with all those guys dying, he actually got quite a good few swipes in there. Mido won that strategy against me so many times, I got really mad. The Zornhau clown the, car, the lance, it's really the good. Clown car. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's it's surprisingly good. <laughs> in this matchup, especially, right? It's like, oh no, you sent yeah, in 50 yeah. men at arms. Surprise! Well, it, it helps solve the problem that the the Zorn, the, the Lance Neck have, right? Which is like, range fire can just kill them before they deal damage, right? The Rams don't have as much of an issue with that, right? You know what it um, is? It's, it's the Order of the Dragon's very own shield wall. Because you move slower, right? But you take no range damage. There you go. I think Louis needs to think about trade soon, potentially. He has access to the left trade. I think he needs to wall that soon. Otherwise, I think the way that the compositions are produced and the cost, he's going to be forced into, like, Horseman Archer very soon. Like, I think it was wise for him to already invest in those. But, yeah, this... Hmm. Wow. Gonna lose two of the coverings here. And the interesting thing is I'm wondering, like, Louis, is he trying to find a way to get back towards Mangoes? Like, this horseman just hopes firing on the back line. It kind of feels like that's the way he's leaning. It's a decent solution against these hand cannoneers as well. And to be fair, I, I the Gilded Archers at the end of this are the thing that always walks away. I'm not going to say that's an outright positive considering that's food and wood, but it does mean it's, like, at least one less thing to worry about replacing in mass. Well, that, that's 20 Gilded Crossbowmen, which are absolutely an answer to these men at arms. They, like, four-shot them, I think. It's, like, really, really, really fast that they die. Um, and Wham's army is kaput. Where is it? It's it's on uh, it's on hold. He's yeah, training back spearmen to fight the archer crossbow. <laughs> like, it's not, not a bueno situation for Wham at this stage. He's going to have to find a solution. This choke oh. point has mattered a lot. But in the meantime, Louis has also been doing raids with yep. the... Uh, the elite horseman. Not just that. Check the gold just south of this. Right? He can go back to land next. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's got an AK here he's munching down on. If you're going to go mass spearman now is the golden solution. Louis only needs like four lance neck to kill you off. Like this is actually very scary. Keep is going to go down. That's going to open a floodgate. It's going to be another AK gold access. And behind this, sure, he's got a few TCs to give E repairs over. There's not much of a strong static defense in investment, right? Like, wham. All these cannon placements, all these keeps have been in the center of the map. What happens when you lose this area? I feel like in the first day of this tournament in the group stage, we saw Louis play this sim against Numidon, and he looked kind of lost as to how to handle it and what his like late game plan is. I feel like this game is the total opposite of that. I feel like a lot of his transitions have just made sense with the pace of the game. 
And it feels like he's really sorted it out, maybe, yeah. in this period of time. In these last few weeks, it feels like he's really come together with a strat here for how to actually play this late game. He has a really solid match, a really solid composition at this stage, and it's not using the Gilded Knight <laughs> late game, right? <laughs> it's not over-investing in the hand cannons, right? It's, it's range units. It's making it's... use of these cheaper units, yeah. and I think it just makes sense. I legit think it's all about range units. It's someone, like I said when this game came out, I was like, I actually think Gilded Arch is like the secret OP unit in the comp. Guild of Crossbowmen, I got convinced when I saw what Doomu was doing against like Jean Dark pickers of that unit. You're yeah. seeing it here. Like it, it's such a weird taboo feeling when you're an HRE spammer and you try to play Dragon. You're like, yeah, melee units are great. No, 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 no. Despite what we've seen from the Lance deck, the true MVPs have been the back line of Louis' comp and now is in a very strong position. He only just got Military Academy. He's been pushing this back without production advantage. Imagine what he can do with the extra spam. Yeah, that's really crazy. A lot of it comes down to, I guess, how the, the the Order of the Dragon units, like, function. Like, having extra HP on a melee unit doesn't always matter as much when in Age of Empires 4, oftentimes overkill is just a fact of the game. Like, when you have a massive hand cannons, they deal, like, a thousand damage to a knight, right? It's like, it just dies, right? Yeah. And that's just the same for the Gilded Knight or or the original knight or the OG knights, right? Like, it's just, it's just the same thing, right? Whereas here with the range gene, it's getting more DPS actually matters. So yeah, I think you're onto something here. I think, well, I think Louis onto something here realistically, right? You have ways whenever no, no, your opponent I'll, I'll has big masses. <laughs> yeah, take credit. Whenever your opponent has big masses, you have Manganels and Lanch Neck to deal with it. And then whenever it's these most more smaller, like strung out fights, your ranged mass is just so solid and so hard to deal with in low numbers for the opponent. It just really seems to come together. And it looks like Louis found that combination this game. And I'm struggling to see what Wham could even do with his units or composition or strategy that would fix it. This is like, who just has the answer here. Well, um, this is the thing with the range backline as well. Like once it became about hand cannons, like for ages, he was trying to counter it with Siege. But just think about the ranges on these units, right? Like both Gilded Archers and Gilded Crossbowmen outrange hand cannons. Sure, you can gap close quickly on them, but as you mentioned, a lot more tanky. That's another interesting thing about Dragon in the late game. No other sieve can inflate the health pool of their range units well. Like, you can argue Atabegs, but dude, please, when is anyone building those, right? Everything else gets inflated. Biology gives you extra health. Elite army tactics gives you extra health. But for the Order the Dragon, your backline is already so insanely tanky. So, like, just cheaply sniping it out isn't really a great option. Like, typically, when you see someone do what Louis done, given Wham's siege position here, the play would have been four Manganels, GG, right? But... It takes so long to smush a single one of these targets, even with Siege. Yeah, oh, I feel like the only way Wham can really win this is by starving Louis out of gold, right? Like, I think, I think once the gold runs out, I think the, I think Wham will have a better game, right? I think he'll just have more options once gold is fully out. But uh -huh. we're still a ways away from that. And oh, <laughs> uh, just where are you guys going? Meeting there. <laughs> Uh oh, Wait, what, oh, what are these oh. <laughs> oh, they all live. He's trying to quick wall them in so they can't go to the gold and build an outpost, but that didn't work. I think it's maybe more about like stopping a keep drop, but it doesn't matter, right? That gold's now gone. He's like, okay, now we finish off the wall. You have what you have, I have what we have. And now this is where it gets interesting, right? Like, yeah, Wham's got a little bit extra gold trickle, but they're about to be out, right? Only the difference is Louis gonna be able to float an extra. 3k before that's the case, right? He's about to tap this yeah. one dry, and I think he's still got about a thousand left close to his base. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a big difference maker here. If you look at the destroyed value, usually, usually when you look at it, it's inverted here. Usually yeah. opponents can kill a lot more. Um, just because it, it's like you've said this before, but mistakes are really punishing with Order of the Dragon. Like if you take a bad fight, it's just you lose so much so fast. If Whereas here, it looks right. like Louis just played this late game so masterfully. It's been really impressive. And, and that's the interesting thing to think about. Like, if you get counted, right, it, it's a big wallet. Speaking of big wallet, Mango gets a hit in here. <laughs> it's just the ranged formation here, right? Just stand your ground, pepper him out. It's going to be a little bit of a start step back. Needs to be careful here as the men at arms are gaining a little bit of traction. But after you lose this arm on each side, right, like, who lost more, right? It's mostly archers with some guild of crossbowmen versus mass hand cannon here. So Wham needs to break through here. Unfortunately, he's now diving a castle. Yeah. 
We'll see. I mean, a lot well, of that gold thing oh. just got spent by Louis. But oh. He's able to maintain it. He has double the gold income at this stage. And the horsemen don't cost gold, right? So he can keep making them. But I think their effectiveness is a bit limited in this matchup right now due to Wham's army. So it, it's yeah, this ranged right. mass is just yeah. staying alive. No answer to the keep as well. It has the relic inside. So it was just raining hellfire down as well on these spearmen. A little bit of a miss micro there. Like, there was moments where the land snap were going in blind without the horseman support, right? So, like, you need to be careful. Louis losing one of those units is insanely expensive, right? Like, these land snacks are doubly as powerful as the HREs, but they are double the price. And we just mentioned that gold is a limiting factor. Like, Louis has now drained himself to the bone. He's got no reserve. If you remember, we were talking about a minute ago about the fact that he should have three or 4K surplus. He's down to right. 250 gold. Yeah, he still has a thousand gold per minute, but that number is going down. It looks like maybe one of the gold mines just ran out, um, which could be really bad for him. But it, it's starting to be a competition for the wood on the right side of the map. It looks like some villagers are creeping forward for Louis, maybe with some siege there as well. Wow. As we have a big back and forth in the center. Uh, the problem I'm seeing right now is Wham is getting worse and worse. Look at his hand candy account. It's deceptive. Yeah. His army is actually trash. The land snake, they're going to get better and better. Because Wham can't afford to keep pumping hand cannoneers anymore, and he knows it. Yeah. He does have an extra relic, but yeah, it's still going <laughs> to be mean, tricky. Yeah, that's going to be With like, what, an extra hand cannoneer and a half a minute? It's it's not crazy. It adds, <laughs> it adds you up if you're not that? losing them. <laughs> it adds up. Every bit of gold adds up, man. I don't know. Well, there you go. Um, he queued up seven more. Unfortunately, those have to run into 15 Well, it would be arches. six. No, I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> I mean, you know, it matters. I hope. Louis, what, using his cauldrons like backgrounds? An interesting choice, but, you know, he's like, I, he's so cold, he's like, I don't even need these anymore. I've got the one range unit I need right here. Well, to go to crossbows and arches, still just stand on their ground. Yeah, Louis is able to keep his mass up. The population for both players has dropped a lot as these armies just continue to trade against each other. Just constant death and destruction. Although I will say, the kill destroyed value has been eking <laughs> up higher and higher for Wham. He yeah. has been taking better engagements for the last five five minutes or so. It used to be about a 20k lead. Now it's only 10k. And there's proportionality there as well at play. So it hasn't been ideal for Louis. This push has been extremely expensive for him. And now he's forced into the trash combo. And that's where I wonder if his comp is going to be as dominant as it was when he could afford all the gold units. But... We'll see. I mean, it, he still has some gold in the bank, still has decent income. So we're not just out of gold yet. I, I'd say, yeah. like, actually, Gilded Arch is going to do a lot here now. Uh, this this is kind of problematic at this stage for Wham. It's, you know, we mentioned the range difference already. Marching Drills is nice on hand cannoneers, but it still makes you as slow as archers, right? Like, that's the kind of weird thing with that unit, is it, it doesn't allow you to gap close, per se. So, yep. I, I agree. Louis kind of been taking a very A-click approach to some of these fights. And um, one thing that's deceptive with destroyed value, you have to remember, now that he's been spamming a lot of horsemen, that's an expensive loss, right? But yeah. most of that loss is a It's an permanent. affordable loss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Permanent resource. Well, they're fighting over the wood here on the right. Now, the the shift, the focus has shifted. <laughs> it's just insane how quickly Spearman died to this. Yeah. I feel like this small group of archers could actually take on all those spears. Maybe not with the hand cannon supporting. But also, like, one Meganel in Q would be really nice for Wham to see, but not quite getting it. <laughs> the trade, they're thinking about trade. Wham has markets in the north, and it looks like Louis is going to deny that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he was moving around for outposts. The funny thing is Louis isn't going for himself. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, I think of these two players, the one that actually needs gold, at this stage, weirdly enough, in this matchup anyway, is the HRE. He can't really afford those hand cannons we talked about, and even going men at arms against mass gilded archers doesn't sound great to me. Yeah, but it's it's not too expensive. He can't afford that. And the spearman getting this around. Okay, I don't know who's sick. surrounded who. You're not trapped in here with me. I'm trapped in here with you. It's Damn the right, four fight the... position, dude. Like he's literally using the berries like they're wolves. <laughs> Hold man, these shrubberies will defend us. Could you just imagine that? You're the spearman, you're like, ah now we attack Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fawns on the bushes, guys. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. Oh man. This is... Hmm. God damn it. Now you've got my brain fully on Monty Python mode. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, as soon as I said shrubbery, as <laughs> soon as I said shrubbery, I was like, oh no, what have I done? What have I done? It's in my head now. Uh...
Now the question is, who is uh, who's actually winning this fight, and who at this point has a flesh wound of two arms and two legs gone? Because they're back to even on each side. But I, I still just struggle to bang against the gilded archers. Like I, I think Louis maybe being a bit overkill with the horsemen. I imagine that's because he wants to start hitting the economy though. Louis found gold again. He he went up back to a thousand gold per minute. He had he had a gold somewhere. It, it was the one. He, now, he, it, but... it was his secondary tree line. There was a gold there that had like fifteen hundred. It was the one where yeah. Wham was ramming earlier, um, like very early in the game. Like so now, I say earlier as if that has context. Forty-five minutes ago, guys. Well, now we need to see how this trash comp goes because this is what we were talking about. This is now Louis like playing without gold. Essentially, he has gold in the bank, so it's not the final gold push of him for his game, but like. We'll see how this goes, right? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I just don't want him to I fight. I feel like his army is more concentrated, right? Yeah, I, I, but I just don't want him to fight with his horsemen. Like, I, I think that's what's cool is like because of the fact there are horsemen, Wham's spreading himself thin. So you know, instead of just running him these horsemen, this is much better. He's just running them around. So the spearmen are like, oi, 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 just chasing across and getting peppered by arrows as they go. They're not attacking. And if you think about that, at that stage, no bonus damage coming through. It's a raw HP game. You're not winning a raw HP game against Gilded Horsemen with Violet. There's no freaking way. Yeah. Now, will this keep going down? I think this is starting to, to arrive at the breakthrough point, right? Where Wham doesn't really Where have that repairs? premium. Does I he mean, not have repair? It's on cooldown. Oh. <laughs> Maybe if we go back a few years when it used to have a lower cooldown, but this stage, 20 seconds out. A few years. Yeah. That's yeah, it looks like Wham had a lot of his units on the left side trying to secure that trade line. And. Louis just pushed, he centralized in the middle and just pushed before Wham was ready and like a lot of pop was over there and man, Louis just took such a good fight. That was an incredible late game decision and I feel like it it's really easy to overlook just how cleanly that was executed. Like a little bait and switch, he saw his opportunity and he took it, we talked about this during the draft, like Louis' late game decision making just seems so good and it's one of those things where the like they were both max pop like theoretically that should be pretty even but he just out positioned his opponent there and wham maybe yep. baiting himself into over committing to that corner um but i mean louis saw the opportunity and took it and in the meantime like you're saying the raids are just gonna keep piling up i mean oh, this, is, this is this is great point bad. like wham wham is funnily enough now going into horseman too late. Like, I think it's way too late for this. It might have been a good idea earlier on when you saw this many archers, but now, like, the way you're going to trickle in, even this many archers, they can easily just snipe you down as they start a step away. He's going to commit anyway. The other awkward thing is you have to remember you get more health, you don't get more damage, right? <laughs> like, we mentioned this, these are not your typical backline glass cannons. Gilded archers have so much health as it is. They'll annihilate the entire army, and I think that, that should be the moment where Wham accepts this for what it is. If this comp can't break it and push it back, what the hell does he hasn't noticed this raid this raid with these same four horsemen on the right th that's the the worker kills just went up like 30 <laughs> with this raid that's really this rough is, for wham it's, it's stalking like i'm watching one of those like active little um, rotating number things you know where it flickers like yeah. one to nine uh the the tough part though is like wham it's weird because you don't really feel the impact of the raid if you're mashing produce on palace swabia right but realistically, uh, this game, I think Wham is now just kind of processing the he's... loss. He's essentially in limbo, right? Like, he's not even getting an army together anymore. He's just sending meat to the grinder, and that those is going to be archers? We, do, we don't talk about it. GG <laughs> gets what? called. Those are that... unupgraded archers from Wham, I'm pretty sure. That is essentially I mean, the maybe... equivalent of a McLaren uh, racing up against a freewheel mini. Uh, it's not going to be pretty, but it <laughs> is going to be pretty good for Louis. That's two points on the board now. Somehow, finding a way to still dominate the HRE an hour into a game. That was a really... I feel like my takeaway here is... I mean, you talked about it at the start. Louis's late game. It's just on point. You even said Beastie called it out as being really solid, and I think... That was a really good showcase there. Like, Wham is no slash when it comes to late game. He is an extremely solid late game player. Um, so seeing him kind of struggle there against Order of the Dragon, where a lot of players, like, Order of the Dragon has its moments, but I think a lot of players agree that, like, the transitions are still kind of unknown for Order of the Dragon, even though the Civ has been out for so long. Like, it's kind of hard to play Order of the Dragon late game, right? Whereas HRE has been pretty consistent for years now, right? Um, so interesting to see that the Order of the Dragon late game was enough there against HRE. Um, I'm personally a little surprised by that. 
Um, but I think that's a testament to Louis, really. And maybe there's just a lot to learn on Order of the Dragon still, at least for me. <laughs> I've got to learn, to learn some. I think it's just it's the focus on melee. Like if you think about the Order of the Dragon, essentially that comp is is it's almost taboo, right? Like when do you ever feel good when someone says your comp in Imperial Age should be archers? You're like, ah, am I playing the English? Do I have volley? No, okay, what are we talking about here? But this is the Civ that actually can do it. Gilded archers are insanely powerful. I always say they should have a, a whirring up noise like a minigun because they attack that quickly, right? <laughs> um, yeah. the, the other funny thing is like they feel a lot better in the late game than the early game. Um, not because they're worse, but because of the way that you use them. If you think about it, archer mass in early game is start a step, shoot, start a step, shoot. In fact, because of the way that like the game is coded, um, there's there's kind of an animation skip there where like if you're very good at the timing, you can get a few extra archer shots out per minute with normal archers. But it doesn't work with gilded archers because their attack speed is too low, right? So like if you think about it, gilded archers has another element that puts people off them, which is that you have to stand still, which you don't really want to do, right? You want to kite. But when you get to this late game and it's just a non-stop meat grinder. It becomes the premium backbone of your army. I, I still think Order of the Dragon has some issues in the late game, but what I want to give Louis here, he reached his comfy stage, right? He reached his meat grinder. He loves to play that late game, and this was a lot cleaner than that Numidon game. If he played this game like he played that Numidon game in the group stage, I think Wham would have won. But that's no. not the way it's playing out. And now Wham back up against the wall has to go for the most powerful pick. I mentioned this in the draft. I think John Dark is the unsolved issue here. That's the one where Louis isn't going to get a golden matchup. Marlins versus John, I think, is kind of okay. There are ways you can contest John, but it's still a really annoying, uncomfortable thing because the thing that a lot of John players have realized now is instead of trying to all-in your opponent, Marlins are very difficult for that, right? They're very sticky. They've got a very good defensive comp. You mm -hmm. force them to invest in that defensive comp, and then you just build a second TC at home, right? And you just outscale their economy so that by the time they get to Castle Age, you've got like a 20 villager lead. Yeah, like you're saying, I think Malians are probably Louis' best bet against um, Jean that he has in his draft. Like, I don't think you pick French here. I don't think you pick Biz here. Um, you could try with English, but it feels bad. <laughs> so I think Malians, you have the most options. And I think an interesting note about Malians, at least the way that I see it, is that I really like that Malians have, like, unique counters to both of the forms of Jean in the Feudal Age, right? If you go Archer... And you have a group of um, uh, javelin throwers, right? You just you can deal with the archer form, and if they go melee, you have a couple of answers to the melee that feel a bit unique compared to most civs. So I think we'll see. Malians maybe have a chance here. Like, that's always an interesting like choice. I feel like Wham has to pick wisely and play around John very well this game because Malians can be threatening, um, and Malians also have really solid eco timings that can compete with John's power spikes. Right, like if the cattle boom and you have, if Louis gets two pit mines and a cattle boom and is uncontested economically, I think that can be an issue for Sean in some games if her XP falls behind, right? And she's not level three in time, then suddenly Louis's timing is going to be really solid. So I feel like that's kind of the cat and mouse we're going to see here. Um, it's going to come down, I think, a lot to the feudal age play with Sean and the counterplay to Jean. Um, so I'm really looking forward to how Louis is going to do here because he's such an excellent Jean player seeing him counter Jean. He should have some insights maybe and some ideas on how to deal with it. Um, Wham though is such a good player as well. So it's, Ooh, I'm excited. Uh, and Late they, in the tournament, man. This dude, is it. I mean, I, I want, I want to see some turn around. I want to see at least one point in the board for Wham. I think this is going to be too. that game. And you know, here's the interesting thing, right? Wham took that away at the first opening phase of the draft because what, what does Louis do wrong here? Winston, he goes on the ladder on el.louismt. He plays these games publicly on Jean Dark. Everyone can see it. They're like, damn, this guy really knows how to use Jean. They know exactly who he is because A, he shows up as in China, and B, he literally doesn't change his name, unlike CSO, who has a different name every day. What would have helped him? What could have helped him maybe keep that secret? Something that we can all relate to is, are you an English Lombo spammer? Are you someone who always picks the French, the Ottomans? You're just predictable, right? I guarantee you that when you get into lobby, there's a small window where someone can quickly just glance at your AO4 world profile and see what sieve you pick the most. And then the sweaty bum lord goes ahead and counterpicks you. Disgusting, vile. You know how you solve for that? VPN. Get yourself some surf shot. Just all of a sudden, you know, you're not like this, this guy from China who loves Chinese because some of us are, are patriots like that. 
you're from South Africa. Your name reads like a Chinese name, but as far as your profile says in the world, you're from somewhere completely different. All of a sudden, you get to get your Chinese pick, no one's banning you out. Louis could have done the same thing. He could have pretended that he was uh, from, I don't know, the North Pole. He's, he's a polar bear, for all you know, courtesy of the, the Surfshark VPNs. Didn't do it. And that's why Wham took it away at the start of the draft. And now, Wham is going to show you just how powerful it is. It's time for the third game in the series. Louis, two on the board. He's looked flawless so far. Let's see if Jean can dunk back in return. If we can actually see Wham finally get on the board. Because, reminder to people, the draft resets after the fourth game. So, although it may look a bit shaky right now draft-wise, we're only halfway through the series. We've got a whole reset ahead of us. But before that, let's get into the third game. Oh boy, and here we have it, Arabia, the classic map, with some not-so-classic sieves. It's interesting to see this. Uh, the Malians, though, so solid on Arabia. They've just been so solid on Arabia for so long now. I, it feels it feels so cool to play them. And look at his map. Look at Louis's map. Look at those gold mines. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> He's got three back gold mines with Malians. That is a dream. Holy. Okay, uh -huh. keep note of this. That's going to be relevant. Uh, the fact that those pit mines are going to be uncontested largely. Um, like, because it's so hard. Like, you'd say, oh, just wrap around and fight it. With Jean, you, you really can't. You can't send Jean around the back of the enemy's base unless you're in an absolute position of power because you just risk you're just at way too much risk right if you take a bad fight or your reinforcements get cut off you just lose jean and you probably lose the game with that mistake so jean has to play a bit safer generally she can't take those big risks behind the base at, in especially in early feudal so yeah. th the fact that these are back there is is actually really impactful for how bam has to play this matchup now did, did um, we ever figure out what like mt stands for in louis name is it like maybe marine lord turbo or something because like i've seen these type of swans somewhere before uh, <laughs> I think Dude. Marine Lord has some uh, influence on this map spawn. Is that what you're saying? I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, maybe maybe Louis is secret pad one. Like, that's an interesting thought, right? We always call it the, the M Lord spawn uh, when you get a desirable one. What happens if Louis? I'm getting ahead of ourselves. What if Louis does go through to that uh, that semifinal? <sighs> Who's gonna get graced? I don't know. All I know is why I'm still. If you get these maps, I feel like you can beat anybody, <laughs> right? I feel like Louis can win against any player with this map, right? I mean, we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe Wham has some tricks up his sleeve. It just feels like if the odds were against him, momentum is on Louis' side, and you get this map spawn, things are going to feel a little bad. But I'm, we'll see. I'm, There's still I'm a lot at, to be played, right? Yeah, I'm looking at the ball locations here. One thing I will say is, like, usually when I... I, I talked about this idea of a 2TC build that I think is really nice. Like, what you do is you go in with Jean, you bait the Marlins to start adding in production buildings, and then you just greed. Right. The problem is, although these balls are really far off to the outskirts, they're also very hard to reach with a second TC drop initially. Right. Extra idle time and also not extra resources nearby. It's not like you've got a berry patch next to them. So that might be a bit cumbersome for Wham. The other reason I think that's very important is something you're going to see out of Jean players that's going to be really important as the meta develops further is optimizing your rotation to kill the balls so that you get back to buff the TC build speed. It's a very big difference. It saves you like 30 or 40 seconds if you have Jean in range when you're building up a town center. But yeah, this like type nils, of spawn, right? exactly. And this type of spawn makes that difficult. Like think about the, the timing and the rotation. You're going to have all your resources and you're still not going to be able to get there quick enough to help the TC. Yeah, those boars are about as far away as they could possibly be. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see uh, if he's even able to find them. <laughs> he's scouting those is going to be tricky, right? Um, also remember know, that, uh, that Louis can know when you're doing them. Right, because the Gaia units do die through the fog. So that's always mm -hmm. something that's very useful uh, when you're playing up against Jean. Uh, I've seen players like Beast use this phenomenally well, where he'll maybe be playing a sieve that can counter Jean. And he'll literally wait for the ball to die and then cut her off on the retreat back to base. Because at that stage, she's like, what, half HP? If you get, let's say you went for a sofa here. A sofa is a really good way of dealing with Jean because you get bonus damage against infantry and you're tanky enough and fast enough that you can chase her down. That's a good sheep haul for Louis. That's a really good sheep haul for Louis. Um, okay, so <laughs> it's not enough to get this spawn. Apparently, he's also the sheep whisperer. Yeah, and ugh. what? That okay. is crazy. <laughs> okay. Remember right. when I said this was like Wham's best, like best shot to get a game in? Like, I think this is the the matchup where it's like, damn, Jean really good for this draft. <laughs>
Um, yeah, but I mean, this is Louis' best best sieve against it, and I think this is just an incredible map start. I think it's going to come down to what Louis commits to early. I feel like with this map, maybe just the tried and true Donso Jav defense into castle, right? Timing. Like, I, I feel like with this map, that's how he can afford to play. Um, I'd be surprised if he does a sofa transition early. I don't think it's very wise against knights, right? I, I think in this game, with the lack of food, it, it could work. Um, the, it's interesting because I've seen a few Marlin players adding it in in Feudal Age. It's really effective if you force your opponent to like, add in archers or even just the genre itself. One thing to keep in mind is like, I remember, I distinctly, Winston, recall a, a game like this with Jean Dark in where they got, I think it was four or five sheep. This is just one bet of six. And the player had to come out on the map too quickly. He got flanked everywhere by Cav and died and GG'd out at 11 minutes. Funnily enough, that Jean player was, I'm pretty sure that was Wham. So. <laughs> We, I hope we don't get repeated that. It looks like he's got a more secure plan. He is going for that 2TC build we talked about. And this now gives Louis a bit of agency to either try to play aggro or now just double down on the Fulani spam. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, walling off the north, uh, super wise to do that. The first Donso might go down. No, he's able to get away. So just a bit of chip damage here and there. The Ville had to back away, but we'll... Be fine and this wall going up on the north is going to cut off all those rotations um and just mean that those gold mines are really safe and also the wood line kind of by extension you just have to protect kind of the north part of your tc and then the rest of your economy being safe is going to be such a huge boon for louis going into this feudal age wham has chosen the uh, melee on dark no real surprise against malians i think that's generally the safer option especially for feudal age because javelins are such a given um with Malians that you just don't want to risk losing Jean for free. And Donzo's is quite nice against either one, right? Like you can poke and prod at the archer form that have no range resistance. Um, even mm -hmm. the melee form struggles because the, the cleaves that are usually very effective, you have to remember oh. that Donzo's are a premium spearman unit. So they're a little bit more tanky. They can take an extra swipe. What an escape. Yeah, the extra the extra little HP there does go a long way. It, well, Sofa, you were right. He is going to yep. go Donzo Sofa. Makes sense, I guess, without Jean being um, ranged. Well, he, he scouted the second the DC as well. Like, that's the other right, thing. Right. So he's like, yeah. okay, that means you don't have knights. So I can have like two sofas to your one knight. And when you chase it down, like if you check the sofa, you'll see they have good base damage. They're very tanky, but they also have this nice little bonus damage specifically against infantry. And that's something that level two Jean cannot get away from no matter the choice. Yeah, really solid play here Wait, from Louis. Wham. <laughs> he's like, oh, no, Jean? there's a wall. <laughs> So when you pinch this, yeah, it's, it's an impossible pinch, but now you can get chased away. Like, the knight is too low to help you, and I wouldn't be surprised if we got to, like, four or five sofas here. It's a really smart choice by Louis. This is Jean's great escape. <laughs> They're going to write stories about this. <laughs> she just uh, walks through the door, both arms and legs missing. I live! Yeah. <laughs> I live! Well, she still has uh, inspiration, but you don't want to use the heal. It is a really long cooldown. Using it just to keep your hero alive feels really, really, really bad. I'm um, speaking from experience, so it looks like she's going to have to even pop it if she doesn't get to the TC in time. Oh, this next attack... Is... No, it, it's yeah, not okay. going to be quick enough. He used it! Oh, for God's sake, what? no. She <laughs> heals! She just heals passively. Oh, no. And now I mean, Wham... I... What? It's TC play. Yeah, but look at what Wham's building. He's building archers. Now he's panic active, adding in spears. So he's going for the 1-1-1, one, 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 which is usually good, but like, but the way this is aligned, it's bad, right? Like, Louis just got a full step ahead of you. This sofa play works great against Jon. It's going to work great against the archers. And now, because you went to DC, you don't really have the capability to go into night spam. I wouldn't be surprised if Louis now just kind of patrols the map with a small group and rushes towards that Fulani. It's crazy. This this is crazy. So basically, Wham consecrated the barracks over a TC or over the stable? Well, That's a really do, interesting choice. Yeah, you, just, you, don't, you don't want to do stable, right? Because like, like the stable, you are against you can't afford those. it. Exactly. Yeah, but, but the TC, yeah. I agree. The TC is a weird one to me, but it tells you his intent. Like this is one interesting thing for people, a tip if they want to deal with like good Johns. Look at what they consecrate. It tells you a lot about what their composition is meant, meant to be, ideally for the next four or five minutes. And that's a really big revelation and an ugly one. I don't like people having to build mass spears against Donzos. It's a bad engagement, right? Like, yeah, they how get many the extra melee. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, it's just so solid for the Donzos, right? And honestly, Louis hasn't made more military. He's he's going to go castle behind this, right? He's just booming and chilling. He is bing chilling. Triple mil. Look at this. <laughs> it's the same two sofa. And there's like, 
he, I think he's lost like one or two Donso, maybe? I don't even know if he has. He's got a um, sofa here. No, he hasn't. Uh, he hasn't lost anything. No, no. Villagers are in a little bit of a pickle. They'll be able to run away quick enough. The surf need to come home. Jean, this is dangerous, right? The cleaves are going to come in. That's nice. But this is an overextension now. Like, this many sofas? <laughs> Only two? I know. Is that sound this many? Like, when you're in this type of position, that's enough to kill you off. So Wham needs to be very, very careful about his approach here. We're 10 minutes in, and that was the first, and now I think a scout just died as well. So now only two things have died from Louis. Like, he, up until that point, he hadn't lost a single unit or vill to early nights. Full That's Mulani's crazy. going to be on the way in the next two minutes as well. But this is this is scary. Wham doesn't really have that same potency. Yeah, the cows are lining up for their Airbnbs. <laughs> They're looking for a nice stay. They're like, hey, we're, we're having a uh, housing crisis in Malian town. There's not enough homes. <laughs> Oh, Are we man. sure that those aren't just British cows? I mean, they're so politely queued up. <laughs> they're not queued up. They're in a, they're milling about. Oh, you're right. That that's 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 British. Uh, the race. It's a game. race. It's a race. <laughs> that was hey, a man, race. Housing crisis. Those houses. They they get eaten up real quick. You got to make sure you get your down payment straight away. There we yeah. go. Fulani on the way. Oh, I, I mean, what <laughs> could Wham have done? He's going up. He, he, he has a nice vill lead, but like the economic difference here is. It's not big I, enough. I think Louis just no, Louis has better income pretty soon, right? Yeah, as soon as it's exactly. Because he's got the back pit mine that he can now secure. He got that wall up, so he's got his third there. That's safe, right? The issue yep. in this game is like th this play. You expect Fulani to come out. It's natural, right? House. But uh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Mine everyone, XP. calm down. There's enough houses for everyone. Don't rush in. <laughs> oh man, and John gets experience for that. That's funny. I've ne I never see. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that before. <laughs> So what we were saying is Wham can recover this game. We just need to burn oh, the Oh, a night for free. Just carting a mill. Oh, Wham, no. Not like this. This is a very you slow You were the chosen one. Like, it's quite interesting the way that Louis split his economy. He's probably with five Yeah. quick at all. It, it feels like he's just, like, he's just flaunting. He's, like, spitting in the face. Like, yes, please dive me. Look, I, I mean, still haven't teched up yet. Fight me. I mean, this is playing with fire, though. His veils are exposed on the north. But he does have the wraparound gate, so it's like, if you even get in here, he just runs through the next gate. The wood line, a little exposed here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Wham try and get a couple of Vill picks. One Vill should escape. I like how he's literally pausing the tech up right now to do this, by the way. <laughs> it's such a wild approach. Like, right now, Louis, he's sitting on so much extra gold. The food is the problem right now. Oh, my God. He just doesn't want to feed, right? He doesn't want to yep. give Jean experience, right? If Jean stays tier two and Louis has 40 units, what a win, right? Like, that's such a huge fight advantage in the next big engagement. But Jean's passive XP should catch up. Did he ever kill the boars? I don't know if I don't he, think did. he did. Can we no. check the two boars? No, he, he did. Wow. <laughs> so this is going to be a really late tier. Remember that tier sofa three on Jean. that denied 50 XP? That guy, that guy was a Chad. Uh, I don't think we ever named him. Well, can you think of a good name for a, a Malian sofa? Um, Futon? Futon. Futon sounds like a good name. We're talking about sofas, right? Oh, yeah, we yeah, need yeah. The, 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 the units. No, no, no. Okay. no that, is, that is his name. Futon, the uh, the denier of XP there. Was actually <laughs> I thought we were talking about sofas. I, I thought we were talking about furniture. I love how Vodka found the exact one. I like to imagine you just control grouped it when we weren't looking. So sofas now actually going to wrap into the economy. Wham has teched up, sure, but like this is a surge point now, right? This is where the sofa mask can kind of undo you. Even though you want to go nights, the issue that you now have with Wham is realistically you don't have the permanent food to keep scaling it. Hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm wondering like what Wham can do here. He's got Sacred Strike caps coming in, but without the balls, he's speed. still... Well, yeah, but he's still like what? I'd say about two to three minutes away from level three, because remember, he didn't kill the balls. I mean, Wham's economy is pretty big. Like, he, he has had 2TC behind this. Mm -hmm. Can we check his consecrations? Just see what he's done at this point. Should be several more now. Stable. Double barracks. Yeah, but he does Very stables as well. Which I find especially interesting here, right? Like, if, if you actually want to use the stables, it's very efficient, right? Like, it's one of the biggest, like, cost savers. Uh, but if, if you can run it full time. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's the problem right now. It's like I think he wants to keep knights pumping. I'm always a fan of archery rangers. Archery rangers are great because at this stage in the game, you can get the um, ordnance company. You can discount the gold as well. And that's when the arbitrary becomes a very cost efficient comp for Jean. Unfortunately, in this matchup, outside the sofas, there's no great value in arbitrary spam. Yeah, the arbalist is going to have less value here for sure. Um, 
It's interesting. I, I'm really curious about how Wham's fight is going to go. He still has a military lead. His economy is solid. It's not that much worse than Louis. Louis' main advantage right now is his food income is insane, right? But on the other resources, Wham is kind of doing okay. So he should be able to mount a decent enough force here. Just has to keep on top of his blacksmith upgrades. Maybe last game he's kind of hitting himself because he ended that game with still like not even some of the level one blacksmith upgrades, right? Um, so this game he's he needs to stay on top of them. We're now getting into a relic race. Louis is actually being him in that regard. Like the thing that I like is like Wham. I, I think he has a very strong timing in like six or seven minutes, right? But you have to be careful not to give up too much of the map. I'd love to see Wham kind of. Maybe the next three or four minutes collecting stone and prepping for a keep drop on like the left side. So I think these 8k golds are going to be critical. Like you do get big discounts on arbitrary massing. It's very strong. But it, it's a slow process because of the consecrate cooldown, right? Mm -hmm. um, once you have got like five or six archer ranges, it's insane how much longer Jean d'Arc can last in imp plus than the French. I'm finding this very interesting though, KP, is like usually when I think of Malians, I think of like this is their timing, right? Like... With the way that Louis has played this game, he played for now, right? Well, like, uh, no, uh, you say right? that, but this is Louis. So, <laughs> I think, you think he's I, just playing for late game right now? He's always playing for late game. Well, <laughs> yeah, but hmm. yeah, he's getting upgrades. I, I guess I'm just a little confused by the play right now. I, maybe I just need to learn something, <laughs> right? He is, he is massing now. He has more military now. I could just I could just see a world where the fight doesn't go as one sided as he's hoping, right? Um, but maybe that's okay for him still. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like, okay, no, dude, I I think I know where Louis is going with this. I've seen him do this before. This is gonna be Musafadi gonna late game versus um, Arbitre. He's actually he I think it was Louis versus Papipo. He destroyed Papipo in the late game of this. It took a long time, but he done it. The issue in, in this situation, though, is like the trade posts compared to that game were not like th these ones are not great. Like the game where you done it well, it was corner posts, so he could just trade behind the front line. Look mm -hmm. at where the trade posts are in here. Like Dry Arabia, sometimes spawns like this is a more recent addition I've noticed. You're exposed. So like if Louis' goal is to go imp plus and basically spam scouts plus gunners, this game is gonna hit less impressively for him. Yeah. That's that's an interesting point. Both players just massing up and booming behind this. It looks like Wham. Oh, whoa. Moving out with a lot of warrior scouts. Attack on Titan time. Has Wham got Gambesons yet? Why this are they really in such important. a conga line? What is this? Did because, he right click Because something? I told you they're British people. We love queuing. Look at them go. You um, just they're... click the wall. Control, shift C, right click. <laughs> uh... Well, the wall's coming up. Might be a little bit late for Wham here. Wham. Whoa, boy. Yeah, They're the in. scouts are going to go for the burn. And Miss Louis in with the warrior I, scouts. Is he looking for the farms? Because right now, Wham, he doesn't have that many farms, right? Like, it's just a, a small handful. So, Louis is going to find that maximum impact there. Yeah, and the army for Louis is really, really solid. So, the timing worked. Like, he's here. A lot of the units for Wham were on the right, just defending. And now they have to make their way across. Wham has to wait, and that's going to be a painful time while he waits for his army to come in. Scouts rotating the wrong way, though. They're going around the left side of the tree line. If they went right, they would have actually scouted all the workers on the gold. So he'll be able to help the food. Is he actually going to scout the veins as well, though? Because that's actually going to be very important. Wham still needs a lot of gold to get this all online. Still some upgrades to come out. Whoa. But this is a heavy hit, man. <laughs> They've spread out. Da -da 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 and meanwhile, Wham isn't even reacting to it. He's too busy, too busy losing the front line. Yeah, so he just took a, a disjointed fight. Half of his army wasn't there. What? John was on the front. Oh, no. Are you no. kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at the Bill's melted. John dead, disaster strikes for Wham. Everything goes down. Everything dies. He might win this fight on the front with good positioning and good manganel shots. Looks like He's the crossbows and like the archers are in position, but everything else is dead. I am, KP, I... what is happening? When was the last time you saw a warrior scout spam hit this hard? It hit so fast. He had nothing. 
He had like he had like 20 less units than Wham, and then suddenly he had like 30 more, and I guess like 30 of them were warrior scouts. He just spammed them out really, really quickly with that food eco and went for the timing attack. He said, you're not ready for this. And boy, was he right. Wham, look at the vill count. Completely neutralized. And John behind being that is the Mali eco. <laughs> He's like, you can get level four if you want. John Ass Blast is not going to do anything for you here because Louis, look at what he's doing. He's getting ready for attack up. He is going to be moving into that imp time we talked about. And I can't blame him. He's, as you said, completely neutralized any lead that Wham had. And it's insane as well because if you think back to that rotation, I'd say Louis missed at first, right? Like he went for that wood line assuming that Wham was taking risky resources. He spent the first 20 seconds of that rotation finding nothing. Wham got even... so tunnel vision though. He saw nothing. Yeah, I think it was just completely overwhelming. I, I think that uh, that attack was so alarming and surprising. Most of those units were behind Louis' walls at his town center for like 10 minutes. He was just slowly massing this army and he just ran them across. And behind this, Louis has even stolen two of the relics that were adjacent to Wham's walls. So really good pickups for him. And <laughs> Louis just wants to do it again. He's like, let's put it back. That was pretty fun, right, guys? It's I like, had a good oh. time. Did you? Did you? Have, did you enjoy that way? I think we should try this again sometime. Wait, he's going down the center. Uh, Louis, maybe being a bit too greedy with his fort, the Huntress. It looks like it's been scouted. Wham's actually moving out to contest it, so he is going to see this going up. However, if you do attack this, like, what's more worth, killing thirteen Marlin villagers or losing another twenty French? Cancel and it's the a cancellation up. that will buy him some time, but this massive Ooh. army is about to walk into his base. Classic a distracting Wolalo even gets vodka. Our observer gets gets gotten by the by the good stuff, and oh boy. He's going. Here comes the army. Scouts are on the move in. Wham. I mean, he needs to break in and do some permanent damage here. Louis, keep in mind that he's still going for that tech up. It's a more defensive for the Huntress on the tree line. It'll give him some defense. It'll give oh, him some the time. Gold. The gold. It's the gold. Again. Not again. Wham, wake up. Wham. Look, look, look. Okay, Wham sees it this time. Yeah, but he's now, like, not again, not again. But his <laughs> I, army I to defend with is so small there, Winston. I think he's got like 20 units back to defend. And funnily oh, enough, he's just going to take down the guild hall. You have to climb it before it goes down, right? But if Wham doesn't, he's stuck. He doesn't have a tech up. Otherwise, it's going to take him over two minutes to get the food together. And that's without producing units. Dive comes in, but it's not going to stop it. Wham, not able to deny the tech no. up. And he forgets to get the food out. No. No way. Run! John is trapped! John, she's trapped! Wait, what? She's trapped! She, she goes down! No. She's not She's not trapped now, The Winston. Fortress of the she's, Huntress. She thought she was the Huntress, anymore. but she was the hunted. She's not suffering anymore. Oh, but this could be a really big Manganel hit on the Musafati. Oh. The splits come in, though. Louis just pays attention. And the now... Scouts go after it. Freebie. And the meanwhile, in the base, wow. like, you're being idled up underneath your TC. I can't believe this. Louis is fighting him. And I say he's holding on fine in three different locations. Make it four. Surround comes in oh. with the Musafati. They're done with the appetizer. They want the main meal. He's got the melee armor, I think, on the Zerbali Trier. So they're they are quite tanky. But I think the term that, you're looking for is die slower. Die slower. Yeah, they they are quite die slower. Um, <laughs> another gold mine being slurped up by uh, Wham. Hopefully, another band of scouts doesn't come by for him. As Louis' Imperial Age technologies come in, Wham's yeah, that's, that's the hopes of winning this game just like disintegrated, right? He, he, yeah. he's, wait, his wait. landmark John, has given him no value. John, 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 Hey, guys, there you go. That's the Companion's equipment making the difference. Boom. I mean, legit, that's the difference between life and death there. The, the scary mm. thing, by the way, is Louis just repelled you, aggroed you, without any upgrades. Like, that was a tech up, and that was him fighting with a, a Castle Age army. What happens now when you're in equal military numbers, but now, now it's elite status, right? Scouts, Mass Musafadi coming. It's kind of interesting to me, actually, that Louis hasn't gone into Javelins, despite the fact he's up against Arb the Trier. Yeah. Man, this is rough. Did he repair the guild hall or does he just stack that food naturally? Uh, ah, he, yeah, he yeah, got yeah. it. He pulled it. He's still he not had, ready for he the had to. Up, though. Right. He had to. Yeah, I mean, that delayed him so much. That's like a lot of gold that he could have been mining. And instead, he was using his wood to repair. 
Keep in mind, though, he still has gold issues, right? Like, he got denied off the right side now, and we saw that that vein in the back of his base was getting pretty low, and, and that's worrisome, right? Because at this rate, you're going to get a fake Imperial Age in uh -oh, that you will check up, but you won't have any resources. <laughs> Sean had a few too many shots. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've had a few too many shots of JD. I can take on the entire Imperial Malian <laughs> army. <laughs> yeah, she retreated, so she's okay. But yeah, these Palisade walls just have not been good enough for Wham. He needs to get a more solid defensive strategy going. He's recouped some of his old villager lead, but it should be like 50 vills now, right? Somehow, Louis has just been chilling at 60 vills. I guess he lost quite a few in the counterattack. Um, he lost 10, but I, I feel like Louis almost even stopped training vills at a certain point, right? Like, he's just quite, chilling. Quite possibly. Um, the interesting thing, though, is like he's got the tech free on his food gathering, right? So, like, actually, <laughs> the, the Mulani makes up for a lot more now. And these walls, yep. this is the other scary thing. Like, if there's one thing you get advantage of straight away, and imp, even if you don't get elite statuses, it's torch damage, right? It increases with age. So, like, to your point of these palace walls, the moment your opponent is going up to an imp, you already feel like you're in trouble, right? Because you just don't have these efficient walls that are going to stand the test of time. Now you're just seeing these breakthroughs in, like, three different locations, and Wham is getting spread thin trying to defend. But what worries me is you're so busy defending, that when are you getting that gold? It looks like he's making a play for it now on the left side. He's gotta. He's gotta. Wait, the rook bounce is being built with only one bill. Wait. Okay, it's gonna be please. okay. Please, no, no. Please. It'll be okay. <laughs> no. It'll be okay. It, it, I don't know if it will. No. <laughs> oh A landmark itself will not get. Oh. Uh. uh, uh, uh panic. That's a Nobody lot panic. of villages. Panic. Everything is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Are you sure? Because there's a second wave coming. I, I don't know if it's gonna be okay. When? What are those Bobby? scouts doing? The scouts are dancing. Wait, what? Coming. <laughs> Waiting for reinforcements. Disco party in the back line. I'm still not sure this is even going up. It goes up. No, I, I don't think it does. Why not? Because there's about to be 10 villages and less because the scouts are now attacking. The second wave's coming. Jean is gone. All hope is gone. Wait, Jean died. Why should Jean <laughs> die again? It's funny. I think, it, I think it goes up. It goes up. It goes hey. Up. Like, I I've will been... bet. I will bet my... My, my top my... dollar. <laughs> uh, this is no. the slowest <laughs> red palace much. ever. He's got seven villages. It feels like it's taking a lifetime to even get there. Oh yeah, and, and bombards are coming across the map. He lost his eco like he basically lost the eco lead again. Yeah, the flood uh, is just here. Well, I mean, he never really had an eco lead. Even with twenty more vills, he didn't have upgrades, and okay, he didn't he, have them. He lost the peasant lead, Winston. <laughs> the peasant I think this lead, is over. Yes. He's not even reacting anymore. I mean, wow. The, the problem here is like now the floodgates open, right? Like your food income's not that great. Your arbitrary is slow. They are quite tanky up against the, the scouts, but the scouts aren't looking to fight arbitrary with gambesons. They're looking to fight poor unarmed villages. Yeah, the arbitrary also don't really counter much here. So their damage output is also kind of low. That's why these fights take so long to resolve is nobody does any damage in these situations, right? Um, except scouts to vills will be good. That will be good. Musafati to villagers, also good. Louis um, literally just looking at his comms like, what do I build? What goes fast in this game? Yeah. It's I mean, he's so getting the tech via uh, Farimba. Oh, tech? Farimba leadership. Yep, yep. No, Farima, Farima. Farima, yeah, Farima There's leadership. There's not a B, and the, the landmark has the B. That's how I remember it. Um, if, if it did, that would be the closest we'd ever get to seeing Farimba in games these days. But yeah. It... <laughs> it, I mean, it's a solid tech. It'll mean that the... Uh, so if he has Sofa on the field, the nearby Musafati will be so fast and it will really help him run down enemy units like Jean d'Arc, but That's it's not going to matter. Wow, Louis is bloody surgical. Three games in, three points on the board for the Chinese officiata. And I, I'm starting to wonder after that, that was meant to be the strongest point we were seeing in this draft for Wan. He's got one more game to go until a reset. And I've got to say, the remaining picks don't look that spicy for him. And if he's not able to beat Louis with maybe a slight edge, what happens when it's more of a 50-50 draft? Yeah, is he going to be able to beat Biz in English for Louis? I, I feel like if Louis just picks English and Wham doesn't play a perfect game, then I feel like it's just going to come down to execution. Um, and regardless of map, I think Louis's just playing better right now. Um, just salt, like just up front he's just playing better but on top of that he has gotten some good maps like last game he had a really good map and better sheep luck which 
that does matter. That matters yes. quite a lot. It enabled his strategy to be super greedy. He, we even you talked about it. He was almost toying with with Wham in the feudal age, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not even aging up with urgency because my map and position is so good. And I feel like part of that could probably be in Wham's head right now. Um, seeing that map, seeing how like devastating that attack was, and your whole economy, you just he just he kind of just got slapped in the face, right? Um, with that with that attack, right? That was just like a backhand, a strong backhand. And it's like, it's tough to recover from that mentally, right? It's It can be really hard. Um, so I'm curious to see how Louis handles this matchup, which I'm sure you have lots to talk about here. I see you uh, doing uh, a, one of these, you know? All right, it's time for, for a KP ramble. This is a very interesting matchup. I wasn't anticipating this to be to be the pick. I thought Louis might lean to Byzantines because I've got to say French versus Japanese, really good matchup for the Japanese. The fast castle build is very difficult to counter just because naturally you get arrow slits in, right? By gathering gold. Nothing really takes you off the path as the Japanese. Those farms make your food eco scale quite nicely in transition. You don't even have to worry about transition though. On a map like this, the amount of sheep, on a bad sheep all day, you get... 15 sheep it feels like right that's plenty for what comes and gotta say you know let's say both players rush castle age here you'd think french knights would do better eh. funnily enough mount samurai feel better because the strongest element of a knight on knight fight is the charge if you're charging each other one side has deflective armor so you're offsetting a like almost 40 damage hit actually i think it's 40 in castle age Five seconds of the bonus damage buff will give you like an extra five damage every two seconds is not going to negate that difference. So really powerful. And the follow-up play is even more lethal. You give him a heavy dosage of Onamusha with Uma Banamum. It's so bloody difficult actually for the French to overcome that. So wham, you know, a credit to him. I didn't really think about this because I forgot we got up, like Frizzy Marshes. I thought it might get saved later. Makes a lot of sense. I still think Byzantines would have been maybe a more practical choice for Louis. But we have to understand, French has historically been one of the best sieves on Frisian Marshes, up there with the likes of Rus and uh, I'd say Mongols and HRE, typically are all the go-to ones. But of the newer sieves, Japan has definitely been looking strong here. And remind us again, KP, if if Wham wins this game, they do another draft, correct? That that yeah, that we confirmed that that is how it works. It's like if you go yes. four games in, you then do the draft over again. So Ottoman. Yeah players beware you might still see that come out for some bewildering reason in the series Rus players uh, give it up honestly i think like ottomans for some reason has a chance of getting through the draft but the Rus in particular have been banned um almost like every game it feels like right i think like yeah in fact if i'm not mistaken there are only a few sieves that uh, were not picked or banned yesterday and mm. ottomans was like the only one that I think made it through a ban phase of like the OP ones. So we might still get that coming out. Um, it might be an experimental element that Louis could take. I think the game where Ottomans was allowed through was B, let Louis have it. So I'm not expecting it. What I want to see on a draft reset, if Wham could get us there, some people are like, whoa, don't jump the gun, KP. But I think genuinely this, this like, you know, outside of something wild, this should be a win for the Japanese. On a draft reset, I like that he got Jean. I would love to see him kind of pivot into a Japanese focus again. Like, I think Jean Japan, like, if you do these drafts back to back, Jean Japan should be like the strongest one two punch for Wham. And it would be the way that he gets to a game number seven. Because right now, folks, like, we're looking at a full road of recovery, right? If Louis wins yeah. this, that's it. It's a best of seven. He will be through to the semifinals up against Marine Lord. Yeah. And he's playing like he deserves to be there for sure. But got to see how Wham is going to pull this back. And I think the redraft is going to be it, right? I think. Like, I bet if Wham could replay Golden Heights with a different Civ or just do something different, uh, I feel like it would go better for him um, because the way that Louis played that was kind of odd. And I think that just caught him by surprise. But, you know, if he could play that matchup again or see some of these games again, maybe he'd think differently about the draft now that he's seen how Louis is playing. For example, how he played Malians there. Like, I think Wham could maybe play differently on JD next time, maybe to try again. Uh, but yeah, this is... Yeah, this is looking rough. Uh, but like you're saying, Japanese against French uh, deflective armor is so solid. It, we've seen Japan played kind of two different ways, right? One is they try to spend as little as time possible in feudal and just get to the castle age. And the other way is they kind of do this really odd play that you're a huge fan of, right? They just get a bunch of units out in feudal and do this big spam with the Kuro Storehouse. Um, do you think we'll see that style here? 
I, I think you just go fast castle curse storehouse. And the issue is like if this was yeah. a Jean pick, you could pressure a bit better and then force them to hang around. It's more difficult for French, and that's bad because like the best thing you can do is force a Japanese player to build spears, right? Every Japanese game, or most that I've seen being a loss in this tournament, has involved spears. It's just not something they want to go towards. If this was a civil in horseman, you go Onobagisha, easy clap, right? Like you can just beat that bat. But Onobagisha against knights is a, a losing fight. Um, I'm noticing a bunch of people. They remember the cast, Winston. They want a bunch to talk about cock. I don't think we're going to get any any Chamber of Commerce play here. That is definitely the quickest way for Louis to win because this is a cavalry cavalry matchup. This needs to be a very just strong sock into fishing into a very fast ramp timing here. Louis, I'm wondering if he has something creative in mind, like a fast castle build after 2TC himself. That might be the, the way I could see this working, because if this is just a night spam, it's almost doomed to fail against the Japanese fast castle build. But for WAM fans, that's music to their ear. This man could do no wrongs if he wants to make it through to the uh, semifinals and grand finals, potentially. Back up against the wall, we head to Frizzy Marshes, and WAM may have the best draft matchup of the entire series so far. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages of French on this map is that you know where the opponent spawns based on the position of the trade posts, right? Um, and that lets you get an advantage with the sheep, but wham, this time, not getting caught. He just kind of got lucky. He just went the right way. Wait, can we, and... can we double, double check rotation as well? Because I think Louis, did he do, did he circle the back tree line? I don't no. know what he did. I, oh, this it looks like he just though. scouted less. Yeah, I um, think I think he went a little bit deeper. If you go back to Louis' vision, you can probably see it. He went, I think, a little bit deeper. No, dude, he actually rotated sooner. So that is actually quite wild that Wham somehow he just got this. lucky. And he's getting lucky still. Look at the sheep. Oh, it's so tilting <laughs> when you're watching your opponent collect sheep in front of you in vision. And you're sitting there, your scout has one or two. I have a friend I play against a lot. And it's just always the same thing. I, it always happens to me. And I'm always like, come on, man. Just gift me one. Just give me a sheep. I need this. Oh, I need this. Here's the other like wild thing. I'm yeah. gonna have to. I, I I need someone who doesn't have a life. Uh, volunteers, please, to check this. I swear. <laughs> recently, Frisian marshes. When I've been watching spawns, that South Sacred site in this spawn format always has sheep on the left side. I don't know if I'm imagining it, but like every tournament game I've cast, you are so far, going insane. Are you sure? <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I have no <laughs> like, idea. I, I, I have no idea, but this is the here. ramblings of a madman. Like, I swear, man, it's always there. It's always happening. I'll it's got to be happening. I'll check in with my volunteer in their basement where they haven't shaved for three weeks after they've given me like the rundown. But I legit feel like there we is a We know that you're going to check right after this cast. We all know that you're talking about you. God, no. <laughs> we all know that we're talking about how you're going to spend your afternoon once this is over. Winston, if I want to sit down for an eight-hour gaming session and have six hours of it being loading screens, I'll play GTA. Thanks. Um, I would rather see gameplay. And this is going to be a, a pretty standard kind of gameplay for the Japanese. The other nice thing about this wide rotation, you can be out as long as you want, right? It doesn't punish you because you can just get into Tawada and go on the berries, and it's a great gathering rate. That's another scary thing, is look where those berries spawned. For an initial French knight to get around the back here, it's gonna take a lot more time. So I love that Wham has rushed those berries first. Yeah, getting, getting making use of them early. Some players like to wait for the tech to come through because it's just really meaningful. It makes them actually faster than sheep if you have two techs in Castle Age. And I think even if you have one, it's still a really solid resource, although there's walk time involved, so it's not as solid. Um, yeah, m making good use of it, like you're saying. Just he can go to the sheep later once there's knights on the field. Um, so that definitely indicates an FC, right? Um, three on gold right now. Yeah, this is probably FC, right? Yeah, it, it just has to be. Uh, I love the, the curse house on this. the tree line. Like it, it just makes so much sense. There's there's no real imminence for you to be forced to play this age because like if you think about where the gold spawned. It's a jackpot for the Japanese. The best case scenario when you're against these like aggro sieves, like Mongols, French, that hit your gold, is getting a gold that spawns next to a tree line. All he has to do is drop an outpost on the south side of his gold, and the entire area for Wham is protected. Yeah, and there was some chatter in the chat about potentially seeing the Chamber of Commerce from Louis, but no, we will not be seeing that landmark. Instead, just the School of Cav, just keeping it simple with French. Going to yep. try and apply pressure. Did, uh, is this Wham scouting it for the first time? I think he's about to spot it. That's really good for him if he does see it. Oh, no, he saw it on the front already. Okay. It, it, it's obvious. So like, it's yeah, if, yeah. If Louis went for the, or China, if he went for the Chamber of Commerce, I mean, 
the only thing commercial about that is the extra ads would be able to play because the series is longer, right? Like, it's it's pretty bad here because you know you're going to be up against Mounted Samurai at like nine minutes and you have no contest there, right? Like, you've actually, if you go in this matchup, you go to Chamber of Commerce, you literally just lose Night Warfare because your opponent has over double what you have by like 30 minutes. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> The question yep. now, does Louis try to play fishing while he can? It's uh, risky, but like, what's your alternative? I think you just chill. You have plenty of sheep for now. I think no need to risk it. I think you can go to you can go to fish later once you have a second TC with French, right? Yeah. You can just build it out there, and then and then you're more confident, and then your vills are protected more. Um, I think for now you just stick with the sheep, right? If you go 2TC though, right? Like, like your play is night spam 2TC. He's going forward with Vils. Where's he going? Is he going for an outpost rush? He is. He's going for the outpost rush. Look at the position here. Wants to deny the gold, but there's already <laughs> an outpost. Ah, uh, yeah, that's going to work. Well, no, hold on. Aerosmith is coming through. That's not going to go up there, is it? Oh, dude. Like, any other Civ, right? Any other Civ this could work against. But we have to remember the Japanese. Gavin Gold gets free stoned. Stone. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to build another one. He sees it coming. So he just really doesn't want to let this happen. Oh, he just doesn't want the Vils to come through. I'm not sure what oh, he's interesting doing. Interesting short wall there. Uh, I guess... Like, he could wall to the gold, right? And he just didn't. Our slits won't reach the villagers here. Like, I, I'm a bit reach. weirded out by this. I genuinely, like, yeah, there we go. Outpost is coming. He just wanted to guarantee the knight couldn't dive in. He's going to win this race. <laughs> oh, no! This is oh. really bad for Louis. Louis has to dive, and he knows it. Like, he's going to lead in with a scout to absorb the fire. Scout blocking though, dude. That's sick by Wham. Buying a little bit of time. Uh, Village is gonna rush out, and that's gonna kill the knight. Surely? No, that was the scout HP. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh, God. the knights get in, and this is disaster. All of a sudden, from rags to riches, Louis just takes a bad situation and makes it great. That dive was really well calculated. Maybe, maybe Louis needed to wall the other side, but this outpost is gonna go up for Louis, and suddenly the position for Wham, uh, his gold. Excuse me, what FC is he gonna do? Oh my This game God. is going to be over very quickly. Unless he just mines through the pain. He has to go for this air slits comes in. For his <gasps> sake, it was a little bit short. Yeah. He's... He needs oh, 150 whoa, whoa, whoa. gold. But no, then he... there's no knights. Oh my God. No, yeah. But he could go into... No, I'm not... I don't want to say it. <laughs> Spearman in Castle 8? No, please. He's going to have to Spearman build... comes out. So he's gonna have to build like eight, eight, nine spearmen to clear the outpost. That's his, his only option now. You know what would be sick here? You know what would be the true Sakura Bluey moment? Is if Louis Stop. now gathers enough stone to fortify the outpost. He's going to. The The gold is gonna get shut down. The question is, the question is how quickly can Wham get Castle? And does he even need Castle at this point? Like, is Castle maybe a mistake? Castle's never a mistake. With the we need to check the arrow slit is done. Are the Vils going down? Four Vils have died. Yeah, a Vil went oh. down. Maybe even another. I'm not sure if he lost three earlier. I uh, remember it's French, right? So it escalates. He's lost four so far. So yeah, well, yeah, well that's what I mean. I'm just trying yeah. to. Okay, we see the number on the bottom left, right? It's just like. No, I'm just how that many smart, just died. Then I, I calculate all of them across. I don't just look at the UI. Oh, you math it out. <laughs> beep, <laughs> yeah, boop, I don't... Beep, boop. I'm, I'm watching robot. the mini map like with a uh, microscope. <laughs> oh man. Knight's count is kind of scary. Like, wow, yeah. dude, he doesn't want to give up this timing, right? Like, he's got the gold, sure. But here's the thing. This is about <laughs> as naked of a, of a Castle Age play as, as you could imagine. Like, you get there, but what do you do with it? He goes Zen. Please shut you up. You mass Buddhist monks. <laughs> you build a market, and you buy gold, and you get Zen Buddhist monks, right. and they slowly trickle in gold, and then you shut down the knight play, because the knights will deal half damage when they dive. This is That's no the play. One. I'm saying it's big brain. It's big. Bra I'm just saying. I'm just this, saying. This is why no one talks to you in the office. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's Floating like, gate. Have, have you guys knew? ever heard Winston's like hour long um, <laughs> little, little presentations on why Floating Gate is trash and you should be building Zen? <laughs> I think Floating Gate is way better. The question is, could Zen make have been useful here potentially? Right. He yeah, just doesn't you know, have it, enough gold for a single monk, so he'd have to build a market to buy it. I, I mean, it's it going to be an issue with whatever he does. He can't afford anything, so it's sort of like, yeah. what, what's his game plan going to be here? He could get to the stone. The stone would enable some gold income. How how the hell do you get to the stone when you can't get to the gold? Well, the spearman just did it. 
<laughs> they just walked there. They're gonna <laughs> die if they got spotted, but they did like it. they just touched the stones like woohoo, milestone reached and walked back to base. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. They're like, okay guys, it's safe out there. Can guarantee we did not die. Oh man. The, the knights are threatening to loop around the back. <laughs> I actually can't believe Louis making one of the hardest like counters look trivial right now. I mean, that outpost was godly, right? Like, that yep. was just a really, 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 really heads up play. I didn't think it was going to work initially, but Wham, Wham's response wasn't like picture perfect. It was only slightly perfect. And because of that, it, it just all fell apart. And oh, he could put he could put he could put a floating your thing in a forge, right? Yeah, yeah your but, hero. Yeah, but like that, then you don't have the production, right? And then like then you miss your timing because with one rax, right? Like yes, you want the gold, but now you don't have the production. You'd still get screwed over. You wouldn't get mass together. So I agree with the rax choice here. I he hate that he has to do this. This is like yeah, he bought a market in the, the north side. This is like the most depressing yeah. thing you can do with a Japanese castle age build. There. I can't think... Actually, no, sorry. There is one worst thing you can do, and that's building a Temple of Equality. But outside that, Winston, this is the single <laughs> worst thing you can do. Yeah, this is rough. I mean, the archers are coming in now. Ten archers. This relic is certainly going to get spotted. It's a lot of spearmen. Has to wrap yeah, but there's a lot of archers. Oh, he's he's going to have to threaten the conversion. I, 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 I'm not even sure that's going to work here, though. The, the spearman would get coyotes. more damage during wait, it. Wait, what? He, he spread wide. Okay. He's going to get through here. I mean, one relic's not too bad, right? That's going to start churning the, the machine. Funnily enough, the knights could still snipe this if they just ran him right now. And I think he realizes that Louis says, that's enough space. See you later. Well, lol. That the is conversion not comes out. Off. And fails. Oh, I thought for a second there. I thought, I thought that little, you, did you hear me? That was my yeah, heart yeah, leaping yeah, out yeah, of my chest. You know what that was. Conversions like, are too stressful. You were looking to just fat shame the center knight, right? Because he body blocked the other two from charging. Like, it actually legitimately was absurdly close there. <laughs> that was really close. It was really, really, really close. So now he has to wait, what, another, I think, 40 seconds until he's got another Eurasheer drop, and then he can get that relic home. In the um, forge. Right in the I think it has yeah. to go in the forge. He it just needs to. gold. He has what's to build a forge me, safe, though. But what's scaring me right now, Winston, is like, if this archer mass, it's the thing scaling up, right? And the archers count yeah. all this. So there's a risk that by the time you pick up that relic, the archers are just stuck there. They're, they're displaceable. You can't move them. We bought gold to get the ranged armor. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but look at Louis. He's got steel steeled oh, arrow on the way. He's moving out. On the move. We're, we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the move. This is a game deciding moment. Okay, no. Uh, false alarm. <laughs> false alarm. Everybody back okay. home. Back <laughs> home. We are no longer on the move. I repeat, we are no longer on the move. That could have just been the end of the game right there. This okay. is like when you live in a rundown settlement. You know, that kind of story is like, we need to go out and explore the world, Winston. There's something waiting outside for us. It turns out it's a pack of wolves. The pack of wolves is waiting outside for us. We'll go back to eating sheep every day of our life. He, thankfully, he has a lot of sheep still, right? Mm -hmm. um, Unthankfully, uh, there's a lot of knights. <laughs> oh, my God. There's 14 yeah. knights right now. This is, this is getting no. a bit worrisome, even for Spears. Keep him alive! Get down, Mr. President! Uh, gets a spear, gets a knight. Archers are just cutting him out, though. Like, this is the awkward issue, right? Is he, he needs to try and gap close that, but he keeps getting baited to, to brace here. Now, Wham is buying a little bit of time, a little bit of space. Uh -oh. He's too far out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got big plans. He moved the Vils out. They have moved out, I repeat. Oh. They have snuck out. Wait, no! No! no. no way. How does Louis do this? That's called being built different. I think he's just the, like the God Emperor's child at this point. I think is, is the fair way. That's got to be so tilting if you're right. This is GG. <laughs> That's GG, right? I he mean, can't afford good, yeah. eight vills. I, I, I don't think that the doesn't go up. goes up. No, no that that's not even going to work. Archers in the meantime are baiting the entire spear battalion. Wham hasn't oh, even no. noticed. Oh my god, and now he's, I think he's he knows he just can't do anything else about it. Like, retreating isn't an option in the Vils, right? So it's yeah. sort of like, I mean, he has to it. stick the landing, it doesn't go up, the gold is gone. Oh boy, he got his second, another Yoroshiro now, looks like it just spawned. Um, well, he put it in the TC. Oh no, he's holding one, so okay. one in the TC, he's building a forge that I think in the north. Yeah, but look, Louis, with 13 knights, is building no, another, another barracks. Wait, what? 
Does he not know that if he put it in the forge, he could get gold? Maybe he's just thinking. He, maybe it's he, he's too think, deep. He's thinking space. It's too deep. He's literally just like, yeah, just, yeah. Think about it, like what what really do you get from seventy five gold a minute? Let's be totally real here. Let's not be delusional. You'd get you'd get one more upgrade. He just bought. You can't a bunch even of gold. spam melee tech upgrades because here's another thing: if you don't have gold access, you don't have stone, right? So you get Tatara, and then that's literally it. He can't get Bannerman, right? This is the insanity of blocking that gold. It is. It's really ruined. added up. It's completely destroyed him. He just has to make Spearman to hold. I mean, it's going to be do or die. Like, that tech up comes out. Like, I, I wish we had a camera on Wham just to see the deflation to, to show you how impactful this is going to be. That Archer count already too scary to deal with. I think, like, maybe the one play for Louis actually, now that you think about it, would have been, like, the not Lucio Wham would have been Horseman, and but that is it. Tech up through. GG. Turns out the MT stands for most triumphant. That was disgusting and what i mean by disgusting is like what a cap to that series like it felt like in the first three games wham had something to work with like especially in the hre order the dragon game it was like okay like wham wham's getting somewhere here it's game two game one didn't go his way because the matchup looked really rough and his strategy didn't pan out game two it looks like Wham had some momentum going into that. It looks like he really had a chance there in the mid and late game to potentially even win that game, right? Then game three and four have to just be so deflating, right? Like game three, he just got slapped. And then in game four, like this was barely even competitive. Wham didn't have any opportunities to do anything. He just, the gold got denied and his game just completely fell apart. That was really, really rough for Wham. But honestly, he played so well in the groups. Wow. That's got to feel so bad, but I think that's a testament to what you've been saying. Louis, he's on top of his game. He's got to be feeling on top of the world. This this is a peak player. This is a dominant player. I think this is someone who looks like they are going to win tournaments in the future. This is someone who could win this tournament. This is someone who will be contesting our top three. And I think that is really, really exciting to see. Um, and I, I can't wait to see him play next weekend. So I actually made a bold statement at the start of the day. I even tweeted out proof is there. I said, like, I think if he can do this series all the way to the grand finals, and that's not to discredit Marine Lord. I've just seen him match up against Marine Lord. I've seen him. We saw in the group stage, right? 2-1 victory for him. I've seen him scrim Beastie. Louis MT mm -hmm. is on fire right now. This is, is pristine opportunity for him to make it all the way through to the grand finals. Like, I think this, this is the best Louis we've seen. And he is actually at a level. The only question mark I have is, like, on a longer series... Is he able to compete the draft philosophy? What I've seen here suggests he can, right? It's not a best of nine like the grand finals would be, but best of seven is what he has up next against Marine Lord. Um, another kind of crazy one, like you know, a, mo a moment of recovery for, for the Wham fans. It is commiserations for him. Um, there is no lower bracket. This is it. He's eliminated in this format. Louis continues through. Um, here's a thought, though, for those people that do support Wham. If you want Wham to look better, I have realized something here, Winston. Louis doesn't have LAN experience. Right? Yeah. So what you need, if you're a Wham fan and you want Wham to win to beat Louis, you need a LAN for that to happen. It's a good thing then that if you go across uh, to the Kickstarter set up by EGC and, and Dono, if we reach, I think, 60k collectively, we could get a LAN. So NA fans, reach in that pocket, throw in $10, $20, go for it, go ham. And we can get a LAN where Wham is the one with the experience advantage because he was at Walla, of course. Louis, he's just a kid fresh out of China. He's yet to experience that online. So, you know, maybe that's the way we resolve this.